So, uh, where we left off, of course, everybody had climbed the uh, the, the rope to make it out of the uh, cave, the bay area, uh, uh, the bay cavern area. Uh, you have made it up to the cellar um, uh, with Oluwen behind you into the cellar of Ramanath and Oluwen's house. Uh, she is still seeming certainly very um, uh, strange and, and more so by the minute. Uh, or, well, over time anyways, over the short time you've been over there. It is still early afternoon, by the way. It is only like 12.45, 1 o'clock. Um, so just keep that in mind that you guys yeah. only woke up, you know, four hours ago. Uh, yeah. So it's not really long restable time yet. Uh, one quick primer thing that I forgot to note. Uh, Pogo, that shield, like I said, plus one for AC for you there. Uh, don't forget your guys' inspiration. And also you guys haven't identified those uh, those hag needles yet, those Marathosian needles. Yet. Does anyone have the... Wait, wait, wait. I forgot. Um, do I have my voice back? Uh, no. You guys are still... All right. Yet. <laughs> oh, this has been quite a day so far, guys. Um, can anyone tell us what these needles do? Do any of you guys know a way to figure that out? I can, and I don't remember how long it takes. Yeah. How, how about you, new friend? Can you, can you do that too? No, oh, uh, Or, no, casting time's 11 minutes. Yeah, because you cast it as a ritual. Is that what? I don't know. I don't even know what you're talking about. No, don't Where worry are? about it. She's I've got looking it. around in the cellar. He's just like, where? Where is this? You know, underneath your house. Do you recognize it? She's got a confused look on her face. She says, "They dug out underneath my house." Yes. None of this looks familiar. Not the stairs okay. or. Anything? No. Oh, okay. Just well, this is your new basement. She says these and these look. She's looking at the, the uh, coral curtain. You guys are. In fact, I mean, I can put you on the map if you guys want it with me. Oh, I uh, forgot about the curtain. Yeah, don't touch that. She says they look almost like vine-like, and they're textured like sea plants. Yeah, don't touch it. Kind of puts her hand down. They are seed plants. Uh, Justin, be uh, being honest with how you would have put this in there. I told you that painting that you pulled up and stuffed in your backpack that it was too long and it would be sticking out of your backpack, remember? Yep. Yep. So that potentially could be slightly visible. Uh, how, how thoroughly would you have attempted to dash it or hide it? Not at all! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Doesn't, she doesn't appear to notice it. All right. So, so what are we doing? I mean, I know you guys said you you needed to take a rest. Are we are we doing that here and then and then we're going in? As long as you hold to your promise, I'll, I'll stick with you. Oh, uh, we're gonna go away from here and see if we could get some back. I think we need to report in on what we found. We weren't expecting these massive underground caverns and everything going on, and I think it's going to be best if we come back. Okay. By the way, um, this was your husband's, and I'm going to, I'm going to give her the, the ring, and I'm going <laughs> to, do, do you recognize this? This was uh, your husband's, I believe. Her, her face kind of turns kind of dour, and, uh, and her eyes droop a little bit. Um, the, she kind of just reaches out, her hands are shaking slightly. Um, Stay here for a minute. Um, well, I'm I'm gonna let you know your husband is is his remains are at the top of the stairs, and I don't want you to freak out too much. Um, I've also got this, and I'm gonna pull that out of my backpack. And, uh, I was gonna bring this back to the capital so that they had more of a record of your family. For the gem. So, what was that? You said for the gem. Uh, Artemis, you'd recognize that's, that's their recording. The gem is their religion. No, I don't go to the gym. This was more just for the history <laughs> records. You could. She just, she I don't know if you want to. And, and, and uh, she kind of kneel, like she's still levitating slightly, but she kneels down in place, like she's just gonna sit there, like you like you've asked. All right. Well, these are these are for you. So hold on to those. She kind of she she takes them from you and just kind of sits there with her head down. 
Ah! I'll be trying to like curl up with her just to try and make her feel. Okay. She lets you. She, she's not uh, uh, you know, trying to shirk away from you. She's just. This is a lot to, to learn in the last you know forty five minutes that her husband is dead. Do you know in this shape and so on? Do you know anything about uh, creatures that are in the bushes outside? There's some strange plant-like eels moving around inside the, the place. The bushes, the trees. Uh, Artemis, her head is downward a little bit, and Artemis, since you're kind of kneeling down with her, you can see the side of her face. She squints a little bit, and then she shakes her head. Okay, figured okay. I'd ask. Ah. Norak, how are you doing? Oh, just like Norak. <laughs> to be silent. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good. Just thinking we need to go take a rest and then move it on, right? Mm. Let's go ahead and let's let's keep keep I say we keep moving. Maybe at least get outside. If she's kneeling on the ground, right? She is floating about a foot off of the ground, but is in a kneeling position. You are aware you're flying, right? She, you see her head like, like turn sharply, like down towards the ground, past her feet. And then there's this uh, Artemy again from the side. You can see the side of her face. Uh, in fact, you would be. I mean, depending on your side, you might be right next to her, destroyed here. You know, the hole is in the side of her head. Uh, but she does seem seem like vaguely surprised at first, like her head pulls back slightly, um, and then she just kind of nods, like a subtle nod. I'm gonna ask her if it's okay if I just touch her arm for a minute while I cast a ritual real quick. I just wanna make sure that she's okay. She looks uh, un uh, unconcerned and just lifts her arm up in your direction, in the direction of your voice. Right, so I'm going to cast Identify on her, because it okay. says that if I touch a creature throughout the casting, you will learn what spells, if any, are currently affecting it. Okay. Ooh, um, then the... I'll tell you that they aren't spells as much as they're innate psionic effects, but I would say that psionic effects, psionic effects in this case would be uh, enough that, that you could... Similar enough that you could identify that. Um, so the Identify takes you 11 minutes, right? So you're gonna you're gonna hold her hand for 11 minutes. I'm just gonna touch her arm. <laughs> well, you know what I mean, like like hold her, touch her arm. Yeah, her arm. yeah. Just yeah. give her a give her a back rub and you know see what happens. <laughs> mm-hmm. What's that, G? I was gonna say that's not proper social social distancing. But, <laughs> yeah, um, really. Coronavirus, huh, man? That's why she uh, it. it is mostly uh, the, the the effects that you feel on her are mostly transmutation based. Um, and they are things like uh, gravitational uh, effects and psionic effects. Levitate, for example, being one primary one that appears to be floating her. Um, uh, she appears to be uh, very powerfully psionically gifted. Yeah. She's a real bad bitch, that one. Woo-hoo. All right. So you did spend, you guys were standing around while Sarah touches her arm for 11 minutes. I'm gonna play a song. Just I'm just playing. I'm gonna play on my banjo. Uh, uh, Fox just threw, uh, I might have had this in the primer too, but uh, I put the medic stuff on there for you. You have that during short rests and so on as well. Okay, where exactly is it? Uh, if you go to your abilities tab, medic is in the feet section. I can put one if you wanted. I can put one on the actions tab just as a reminder there for you for how it works. But it's basically uh, you have you have double proficiency with the medicine skill, which is plus ten for you. Um, and then during short rest, you can make a DC fifteen wisdom, which means you may have to roll a five or above, to make a DC fifteen because your modifier is fifteen. So roll five or above on a medicine check, which I know for you is very difficult, but for, for most people that would be you know an, an easy roll. Uh, and if you succeed on it, then if they're rolling hit dice to heal themselves, you. you uh, uh, they can instead they don't have to roll and they can just regain the maximum number of hit points as you are uh, uh, like binding wounds and, and cleaning wounds okay. like that. Would I be able to bind her wounds? Um, she doesn't appear to be. She, she doesn't look healthy for sure. The hole in the side of her head it doesn't appear to be hurting her. Although it is 
gross and kind of seeping a little bit. It doesn't appear that it's being... Oh, I left the heads of those two hags down in the hole! You didn't carry Fuck! Them? No, I, I don't think... I... You put them on the ground. I you put them on the ground and I... Ah! Oh, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> you really wanted to carry around the Marathosian eggs? Oh, by the way, did you... Did everybody understand what, what is happening there? Like, what those were? With the, Pogo with the does absolutely not. <laughs> okay, so... Um, you know what? We'll just we'll leave it like it is for now. But but both Norok and uh, and Artemis have witnessed something that would give you some insight into how that's all working. So you know, if you guys are talking amongst yourselves, then you might not get, or you might realize what's occurring there. But anyway, she does. Although it lets you uh, finish that, and that's the information you gather from it, for Sarah. Okay, and those are her abilities. Yeah. That's that's the the uh, magical effects that you can sense on her are extremely powerful psionic uh, aura that's coming from her, uh, which is being utilized at the moment for levitation, but would have likely other powerful effects that she's not currently embodying. What are you guys doing? I'm gonna look down that hole and make sure nothing's coming back at us. And I'm gonna not uh, touch the fucking red shit. Give me a perception check. Your banjo's still on the cellar map. Uh, looking down the hole, you don't see anything coming. Uh, sniffing the air, you can smell just the vague, vaguest uh, sea air, or like salty sea air. Um, and you think you might have heard a seagull. But other than that, nothing. There might be a seagull down there, guys. <laughs> Hopefully, it's of normal size and proportions. <laughs> Not an evil giant tentacle seagull. <laughs> Just a 400 foot seagull! Oh my god! <laughs> uh, no, I know what your next guys are. What are you guys next boss? <laughs> uh, how far is it back to the, the werewolf camp? Half a day, no, maybe. No. Yeah, it's yeah, not far, no, no. far at all. Considering it's only early afternoon spend. now. If you guys don't spend 45 minutes staring at plants, it'll take you about an hour and a half to get back. Okay, so let's go back. All right, we're gonna go back. We're gonna we're gonna let everyone know. Well, hang on. What? Everybody has just been hanging her out down here in the basement while she's kind of holding on so that you can do whatever you're going to do. But nobody's gone upstairs to do anything yet. Well, we're gonna we're all going upstairs now. I'm not fucking going up alone. What okay, if those... you're taking her with you. Yeah, you, this yeah. is the plan. Listen, I will go listen, up first. Listen, oh, Ola, was it Olawan? Olawan? Olawan, yeah. Olawan, all right. Wait, have we already done this? Is it 11 minutes later yet? <laughs> yeah, well, okay. I mean, it depends. If you were playing music during that time and everybody's just kind of milling around waiting for uh, uh, Sarah to finish her ritual, then yeah. Wait, is Sarah doing... I don't know why I'm doing this voice out of character. <laughs> is Sarah... <laughs> casting this on just her or is she casting it on the needles or is it two separate things? It would be two different casts. Okay, so has it been 22 minutes yet? <laughs> I'm gonna wait to do the rest until we get back to the werewolf camp. Alright. I mean, I yeah. have like three things to identify. Alright. So, all the way. We all need to get out of here and we need to regroup let other people know what's going on, and then we're going to come back. But we've got to do that first, and then we can kill and get revenge on the things that unfortunately killed your husband. And I, I know this is not what you desire, but this is the best possible course of action. Does that make sense? She just nods. Oh, not going to care. Just, just, just out of curiosity. <laughs> I'm going to roll for persuasion. Okay. Uh, she, does, she, seems, she just nodded. She seems to be amenable to that. All right. Um, were you... She, she, she says then, uh, and Artemis looking at her, her mouth doesn't move, and you just hear her voice, everybody hears her voice in, in your head. She says, what have you done with, with my husband? Well, we haven't really done anything with him. He's pretty much where we found him. Maybe said you should be here while we go cover him. Yeah, let's let's we'll be back. Just you stay here. Um, don't touch the red stuff, please. Fix you all. She, she knows what it is. She had mm -hmm. mentioned below that she knew with the coral that, she, that the coral was dangerous. Okay. 
So I'm gonna take my rapier and can I just like like swing it wildly left and right in the uh, hanging coral Pardon? to see if it drops. So I don't have to um, like make like yeah. a small uh, halfling size openings <laughs> in the coral. <laughs> like a like a fucking uh, uh, roadrunner in the movie where he just runs it. Yeah, just just so, yeah. You see like the beetle armholes, maybe just like yeah. walk through. Uh, you you put your rapier in the middle and kind of whack it back and forth. You realize the sides of the rapier are not sharp. It's not. It's a piercing weapon. Yeah, just God. You just you just whacking it back and forth. I can't like, poke it. Like, That's gonna take forever. Well, <laughs> you asked with the rapier. You have yeah. knives and other things and, and fucking oh, yeah, knives that could leave. No arc of one like accidental cleave would be twice your shoulder width anyway if he, if he cuts it down. You know, I think rapiers have an edge. It's just it, not it, how they're designed to work. They're usually they're usually either triangular uh, if you look down profile. Uh, they're either, either um, triangular or square, and the edges are not sharpened. So I mean, they have an edge. They're just not sharp. And if you're whacking wet seaweed, which is essentially the texture of it, then it's not going to do anything. You might as well be beating with like a broom handle. All right, so I go find a broom handle. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm Google searching rapier time. images, and some of them uh, look like they got blades. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna use mage hand with a dagger and just kind of cut through. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's, there's no there's no difficulty to it at all. They all just kind of flop off the ground. They're dry. They just like look and they, they appear shiny and wet, like you know, like seaweed that's been out for just a little bit. Though. And I am going to hold. It's just mockery. <laughs> as, we, <laughs> as we go back up into the room in case there's anything up there. Okay. I'm ready to uh, talk shit. Uh, <laughs> you testing. are right, Justin. What am I thinking of then? What am you I? Have it. It I looks have like it. thin bladed, you know, like a, just a regular sword. I uh, think the practice kind of... ones don't have blades. Uh, I think I'm. I think I'm thinking of an EP, which is a fencing weapon. EP. Yeah, sharp pointed dueling sword for thrusting and use with the end blunted investment. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking of neat, not a rapier. Never mind, it does have an edge. Boom! It's a it's a very it's a it's a once in a blue moon that I gotta be right against Jeremy. <laughs> so I'm pretty excited about that. Oh, that's um, a good day. Right. You make your way upstairs though. Uh, there you can hear the, the you know the kind of jungle uh, atmosphere, birds and, and uh, loud clouds of, of insects and everything. Um, but it it's fine. You don't see anything abnormal. Of course, the the, the corpse that's at the base of the, or at the top of the stairs, rather that is still rot through with all of these vines, still there. But that's all. Mm. All right. Who's who's up here with me? I am, I guess. All right. The two tiniest people to move this fucking body. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Tell you what. I'll get its arm, and you get the rest. <laughs> right. Okay. So so should we take it? Maybe to the it. bed and cover it in the sheet? No rocks coming up. What did you say, G? I was just saying, I, I can help the little ones if they want me to. I mean, I, I don't mind. All right, then hello. Where, where, where are we going? All right. We're, We're just, moving maybe the we body. just, okay. yeah, what are they going to move the body to the bed and maybe put some a sheet over it? I'll go pull the sheet off and I'm going to go undo the, the bed and pull a sheet off. Okay. Or a blanket off, something that I can cover the body with. Sure. And I will, as carefully as possible, pick it up and move it. You know, try not to disturb it. Anymore. Sure. All right. Uh, yeah, there's no difficulty. You found the rope uh, at the base of the bed, by the way, Justin, uh, uh, the last time. But, um, yeah, the, the sheets, bedding, everything is normal. It appears to be undisturbed otherwise. So you guys carefully wrap the body. Uh, where, where are you putting it? Uh, just on the bed, I think, would be fine. Okay. Does anyone know about elfin burial rituals? Is it supposed to be like wrapped in a tarp or burned on a stake? I think we should just leave it on the bed covered and they can deal with it later. I mean, that seems like a good middle ground, right? (laughs) At least then we're not desecrating a body. I mean, I don't want to light a pyre. That's a lot of work. All right. Okay. Then you Ooh. carefully uh, <laughs> still sideways though, <laughs> hanging off the side of the bed, head headlight oh. kind of on the floor. There we go. Um, there are still some, you know, some visible 
uh, uh, veins of the, the kind of odd vine-like coral that are visible from under the blanket. But apart from that, you do have the body, you know, wrapped and well hidden enough that it's, uh, you know, not as uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, it's certainly not a desecration, but not as as uh, horrific as of a site issue would be just climbing to the top of the stairs. Um, Becky, you have you have. Are you just playing it through speakers at the moment, Becky? No, Ben I can is. Hear it okay. And you can hear it through mine because my mic. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. it's not. It's not super loud. It's not. What you? He's gonna oh, turn it down. Down. Okay. okay. It's not super no, loud. It's, it's a feedback. Muting effect. me isn't gonna make a difference. I'm catching everybody's voices coming out of your phone. Oh. Oh, that. Okay, so you've got it on speakerphone, then, G. Okay, I see. Um. Yeah, in any convenient way around that, really. Put we'll, it we'll like. I'm getting your Discord working uh, uh, later on, G. Okay. What do you say, Justin? Oh, I was gonna say, put in like just headphones with a mic on it. We apparently all of our headphones with mics are dead. So. Eating my dogs. <clears throat> so, uh, no, they just quit working. So I ordered some new ones. They will be here on Friday. <laughs> oh good that'll be fine for next week anyway even our other game uh, the last couple weeks we, we started playing digitally uh, Justin's game and uh, it's fucking uh, we'll... rough man it is <laughs> it is Seriously. so we're, we're running through roll 20 and it is I try to tell it's, you it's dude tricky. it's tricky look so, so there's there's a new one called Foundry VTT that comes out mm -hmm. in two weeks it's 50 bucks I'll buy the license and it is a billion no. times more no, for real. Yeah, like, watch, watch, watch a two-minute video, and you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, I'll, I'll watch a video. I'll, if, it's, if it's good enough, I'll, I'll pay for it. But mostly I need it simple because, like, Becca and Leah and stuff, they're already having too much trouble with Roll20, and um, that's about so as simple far. as it could get. Well, that's the thing. is It, it, it kind of looks like it, but there's, there's complexities. Like, even rolling dice is a little clunky in it. Um, I haven't I haven't actually played with it yet, but just because you know, it was all in beta and it comes out, like I said, in a couple of weeks of release. But uh, I'll, I'll actually test it first to make sure it works. Yeah, we'll test it. We'll if it's worth it, I'll, I'll buy it. But mostly it's like I don't want to... Because Fantasy Grounds, how much does Fantasy Grounds cost Like with all the stuff that you have? Ten bucks a month if you buy it like that. Okay. Or if you, That's actually if you buy, not bad. If you buy the full license, yeah. If you buy the full license, like if you buy all the stuff I did, it's a lot more expensive. But if you just I was going to say... It, I, bucks a month. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Continue. Anyway, so you guys have, have uh, put the body there, though, um, and you, you, Ben, don't worry about it, dude. It's fine. It's not. It's not super loud. At least it's not bothering me. I was just curious if that's what it was. I thought it was playing through speakers on Becky's side. Yeah, no, it's, my mic's super sensitive. Yeah, it's fine. Well, you're you're muted now, G. So <laughs> <laughs> you know you're muted. I can still hear you through Becky's one anyway. But or you could turn the volume down on your phone and just be hard to hear. Well, no, he would. He would be hard for him to hear. We'd still hear exactly. Him. Microphone would still be, yeah. He'd be hard. Uh, to hear. It's fine. At least as long as it's not bothering anybody else, it's fine. I can no, fight myself while I'm not talking. Uh, that would do it because your microphone wouldn't pick it up. As long as you remember to unmute yourself when you're when you're going to say something. Yeah. It's so microphone. hard to remember to unmute yourself. Well, it's funny. Anytime, anytime, like Fox or I, if we play any other game, you everybody only uses push to talk because it's, it's irritating normally. So you only put, you hold a button down when you want to talk. That's how you, how it was kind of the norm. But for us, I don't find that is good. Only because like basically, if people are going to interrupt. There's it, it, there's a, a delay when you use push to talk, and it's important to be able to interrupt, especially in character. Oh so yeah, for me, I prefer it this way. <laughs> I fucking love interrupting people. <laughs> yeah, just <Justin>, obviously no. <laughs> Mine is just on push to talk because that's what I'm used to. I wouldn't be able to do like the computer is talking because. Yeah. Sometimes Monk's play stuff, so you'd hear a ton of his game. Yeah, it's fine. It works for you anyways, Fox, because you're adapted to it, of course. But sometimes it does cut off like the first part of what you're saying. Um, but usually, you know, it's, it's only the very first syllable, and I know the rest of the word anyway. So, anyways. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to call up to see if they're ready for us to come up, because I don't want to stay in that basement where you're all this coral for much okay. longer. I want to get back to the okay. Sure. And I think it's okay to come up, guys. I'm Just, actually going to head down and make sure to get the rope that we left okay. down there. Oh, yeah, the rope. I would have probably gotten that while you guys were up there moving stuff. I would have picked up anything. 
are you guys going to carry it around as 150 feet of coiled up rope? No, I'm going to undo yeah. it and then give people back some of the rope. And then okay. well, no, 50 if feet of that rope go... is for me, I think. Well, if we have to go back down there, we might as well leave it. Together. Right. Okay, I'll just leave it as is. Ah! Oh, God, that fucking scared me. <laughs> <Ow>. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> A jump scare jumping up through the hole. I didn't like that at all. Yeah, no, I was literally in my mind. I'm like, but what if something comes up the hole and then just some <laughs> random fucking bark sound? Oh, that's funny. The next fight after the 50 foot seagull is a 400 foot dog. <laughs> Did right, you say a so 400 foot puppy? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it was Ben and Becky's dog, wasn't it? That barked? Yeah. It was okay. stick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, then, Artemis, you, you just pull up the the 90 feet that was held down the hole and then just coil it up at the top and leave it there? Is that what you're doing? No, I'm going to put it in the bag for now. That would there when we come back. We'll just have to retie it around the rock. Okay, oh, so you just like coil up the 150 feet and put it in your bag then? Okay. Yeah. In the bag of holding? God, that would be, that would be heavy as fuck if we didn't have yeah. that. That's why I was asking is because three giant coils of rope would be heavy, but she's throwing in the bag of holding. It won't matter. All right, Need then uh, uh, Olawin stands up and kind of looks around. She looks... Um, like a mourner, like 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 she's a little bit in shock almost. Um, like she's moving a little bit slow, and and she's still floating slightly off the ground, but her head's down, and she's kind of got her hands folded in front of herself, uh, like hanging, you know, one one left hand on her right wrist, kind of just holding her arms in front of herself with her head down a little bit. She says, "Okay, um, I guess I guess I'm as ready as I'll ever be." I'm still just upstairs, kind of by the bed. Uh, Nora, where are you going? You cut out, what was that? You doing anything? After uh, putting the body on the bed? Pogo is there with you. Um, we just start it. humming Amazing Grace. Yeah, there, there we go. Could we hang our heads for a second? Okay. <laughs> right. I think we're going to get the hell out of there because I'm sure, you know, I'm. Norak being tribal probably has pretty simple burial stuff, so probably okay. doesn't understand all this I shit. once was lost. <laughs> <laughs> then, then you I'm not the appearing Pogo, uh, trying to kind of block the view a little bit, like just with Norak standing in front of that bed, which is no other place for him to stand, would thankfully block much of the view uh, of, of the, the body there anyway. Um, but you see Olowen's head appear in the uh, staircase and kind of floating up not looking at you, her eyes are downcast towards where her feet would normally be on the floor, uh, but she just floats her way over the coral and then out the front door. All right. I guess she's not the say goodbye type. And I'm going to follow. follow she, uh, you said that out loud? No. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even if it's under your breath, if Pogo says it out loud. Under, it would be under my breath, yeah. She's not she, the say goodbye said, type. She says, I'll say my goodbyes, if you hear this in your mind, I'll say my goodbyes once all of this is avenged. Yep. Sounds, sounds like a good idea. Then, and then I'm just going to start leaving with the people. I'm also, when I go out the door, I'm going to try to do it sneakily to see if I can, uh, like, to see if I can specifically hear these things in these trees. And you give me a perception check. Um, it's still, I mean, it's high enough that you feel like, well, you, you feel like it's quiet enough out here that you probably should be able to hear them, and you don't. They, they were making very specific slurping sounds, remember, in the bushes, um, and you're, you're not hearing that anymore. I don't know if this is good or bad. I don't hear or see anything, guys. Wasn't there puppies or something in the shed, too? They were. Sarah wanted guys, well, to okay, rest. sorry. I, I shouldn't have said yes, because you guys never actually saw them, but you did hear puppy-like sounds coming from, and, and wet uh, sounds like flapping fish <laughs> for anybody that's ever been, you know, to, like a, a shore. Uh, the before, fish like, the market. The puppies? <laughs> Fuck! And, uh, with yipping sounds. It, it sounded like puppies from the shed, yeah. Although I'm not gonna lie, I would have rather had one of the cool, weird flying fish plant monsters, so... Ah, puppies and puppies. We can pick up puppies back in the main city. I, I'm pretty sure that the puppy sounds were baby fish things. Or they were food. Speaking of puppies, you can hear the growling sounds. 
<laughs> trying to share a toy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's head back. I guess. Let's, what, are we heading back towards where the elves were? I think we uh, should meet up with the elves first and inform them of what's going on. I'm pretty sure they'll probably find us on our way back to the werewolf camp. Yeah, yeah, but I fucking hate how they always just show up with arrows pointed at our heads. <laughs> I'm going to hold this gem thing they gave us. Like, maybe they'll know that that means we need to talk to them or something. You're just going to walk with your arms out, holding the, the big, big uh, gem out? Right above my head, <laughs> like a fucking <laughs> weirdo. And, I'm still, and I still have vicious mockery <laughs> ready to, to talk shit. I've got, I've got shit talking for plants and for small flying beasties and little corpuscle pimple-looking things You're on plants. It. You're just gonna hold an action I'm mentally, of mockery the entire I am, way back. I am mentally prepared to talk shit on anything that attacks us. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you can't actually do that, of course, because every six seconds you would be writing it again, which would mean that you would run out of. In fact, you don't have any inspiration left. Oh, yeah, got it. You've used all your inspiration, but vicious mockery, the spell, is what level one, right? Oh, Vicious Mockery is a... Oh, it's a uh, cantrip. Uh, cantrip. You can do that. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, that yeah. I was thinking that took... I was thinking cutting words, which takes your bardic inspiration. So never mind. You you can be mentally prepared. <laughs> I'm very stressed, though. Like, I'm, you can tell. You look at you look at Artemé, and you'll see the stress in her... Well, me as Artemé. And this mm. her, she's, like, sweating. <laughs> she's sweating <laughs> profusely from her forehead, and her eyes are darting, darting left and right the entire time. Like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> So that, very, is what, that, is what, that is what Pogo is doing for the trip back. Is anybody doing anything else uh, to prepare for or, or during the walk back? Uh, I'm going to have a magic stone. The spell magic stone? Is that... It's a cantrip. Yeah, you do. Are you holding that? Don't you cast that to give yourself the stones and then you can use them in like a... No, uh, I would just pick up three pebbles from the ground and then okay. imbue them with magic. Okay, and you can just keep doing that every minute. It lasts a minute anyway, so it takes you six seconds, and then the rest of the minute you would just uh, be able to hold on to them. Okay. Cool. Uh, then how about Sarah and Norak doing anything? I am keeping an eye on Oluwin for any changes. Okay. her behavior or anything like that. Uh, give me a perception check. Why do you make the worst decisions? Perception is terrible. Mine too. With your it's because we're, we're so oh, small and damn. close to the ground. I'll help keep an eye on her. Did you okay. say minus four? Yeah, I well, she has a, a minus d4 because of her exhaustion oh, from being slammed into the ground and going unconscious. Oh, uh, which, by the way, then, are you brooming it then, Sarah? Um, yeah, because I don't want to step on any landmines. Okay, and even if, you were, if you're trying to walk, though, you'd be at half speed anyway. That would oh, really no. We'd be down at 15 feet. Uh, then between both Artem and Sarah, you both recognize that uh, as you get, like, almost less than a minute even out the door, uh, she, her skin is getting clammy, and she's almost immediately starting to, it looks like sweat. Um, and then you realize that it's less sweat, and it's more of a, uh, it seems like her skin is, is emitting a protective layer the way that uh, uh, elephants do in some other pachyderms um, to protect against the sun. It seems like. But her skin is appearing wet, although not. She's the gentleman. Uh, kind of like that, yeah. <laughs> that That is specifically that he's a he's a water genasi, I think. Yeah. Um, but she, if for her, it appears to be like a protective measure, the way that uh, animals that have um, drier skin, like pachyderms, elephants and rhinos and so on, will cover themselves in mud to prevent the damage from the sun. This is like a, uh, a physiological response to being in, in direct sunlight, it seems like. Uh, what's Norak doing? Just Classic just, Norak. <laughs> yeah, following along and um, just seeing if anything's moving, I guess. And just following everybody. Okay. As we go. Uh, uh, never, uh, never mind. You wouldn't be able to tell that. So never mind. Um, yeah, then you, uh, along the trip, uh, who, I guess, if Artemis is leading the way, who's leading the way? Well. Alright, then give me a d20 roll. Just a flat d20, Fox. Okay. 
Um, you make the, the way around that bend in the road where you where the tree that was moving uh, that picked up a squirrel, remember? Uh, you make your way around that bend. Uh, coming around it, the trees are still 15, 20 feet back uh, from the road. They're not they're not near you or or don't appear to be you know close enough to be able to reach out to you necessarily. But you're sure that as you walk by, although that same one that moved previously is, is now uh, standing, well, swaying in the breeze a little bit, but otherwise is not moving, but you you feel like it's faking, and the one next to it now seems like it also has that, it, it's similarly um, like a bad actor, a tree that's a bad actor. Does that make sense? Where it had appeared natural before. But you make your way around that bend. Uh, the road doesn't appear. There's you know, nothing else on the road that you can see. So more of the trees are changing. It seems like it. Okay, so the corruption is still spreading. So we're going to have to hurry. This is along, you know, near to where the coral is, by the way. The, the, the path of the coral that you were following. This is, of course, how you followed it north anyways. Maybe it's bend a tree cumber branch. <laughs> Come on. That was fucking awful. I should, I should boot you out of Discord for that. For how bad that was. I didn't like Bender Tree, something. but I did like Cumberbranch. <laughs> I liked half of it. <laughs> it was all bad. None of that was worth saving at all. <laughs> but you make your way around the, the bend there until the road straightens back out, uh, continuing your way south. Uh, you see Thermos in the distance. It, it appears, you know, Still noisy as, as they're building, uh, but apart from that, does not appear otherwise disturbed or, or concerned. Does, does anyone see those those elves anywhere in the trees? I mean, and I like dart left and right with my head. They literally could be seven feet away from us, and I've got my <laughs> thing above my head. Does anyone see uh, them? Artemis, give me if, if if you guys are looking. Artemis, give me perception with advantage. Everybody else has flat perception. Oh crap. Neat. Uh, they are to me. There are three of them on your right and four on the left. They're in various trees and bushes and so on. They blend in pretty smoothly. Okay, I'll just wave and say, um, "Come to the werewolf camp, so we don't have to re-explain everything like three times." Please. Who are you talking to? What's going on? The elves in the trees. All the wind just stops. She ah! says. All the wind stops and she points. She says, There, there. She's just pointing at branches. She says, You can't see them. Ah. Uh, wait, can we? We need, to, we, we need to talk to you guys for a minute. Can you, can you come out? I'm not re explaining everything twice. Let's just get to the werewolf camp. They're not going to follow us to the werewolf camp. Uh, Ol- Olowen is looking at one of the spots that she pointed to. Uh, only Artemis. Uh, actually, Norok, you see one, but uh, you see one of the elves just at the top of her head is peeking out just a little bit of one of the bushes. Um, nobody else spotted any of them except for Artemis. Uh, one of the spots that Olowen pointed to, though, she is looking in that direction pretty intently, and then she turns back at Artemis and she says, they won't go into the camp. Shocked! That's me, shocked! Painted oh. shocked! <laughs> They don't have to go into the camp. They just need to be close enough to hear the conversation. She says, she, she she turns back and looks at you again. She says, they can hear you from here. Right. She's not sure what you would even ask. Let's they just won't, tell them while in. we walk, and then we'll just rev, give a brief breakdown to the other people. I we explain it. I'm not explaining this like 20 times. So we she went says, down, we followed the coral, and then we went down, and there were these two hugs. That were making small twig people out of bones and this red coral crop, and we killed them thinking, hey, they're making the coral, because this is where it came from. Oh, apparently the coral goes down in a well, and we think there's some elithids. She interrupts the uh, Artemy appearing pogo and just says, they've agreed, I can broadcast the message. Whatever you explain to uh, the, these, these Morgan, uh, I can translate for them and just broadcast it out to them, so they'll hear every word. You did some real bag of tricks, aren't you? It's very impressive. You kind of grin uh, and touch you on the head. Uh, well, so, anyways. Alright, then you guys continue on the way. Yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take us, like, one more day. But we're making forward progress. 
Oh, she looked at you because you want me to tell them. No. Yo, rainy out, Justin? It is, yeah, my dog just came in fucking Deck? soaking wet. Yeah. yeah. Oof. Yep. <clears throat> my backyard's all, all muddy and everything, too. So anytime my pups go out there, they come with muddy feet and I have to wipe them off. Um, so five more minutes, though, you make your way into the... Oh, sorry. When Pogo, when you said, uh, uh, you know, just another day and so on, all the one looks at you, she says, do you want me to tell them that? And she looks at Artemis. I'm going to say no, because we don't actually know how much a longer it'll take to solve. But uh, uh, we're hoping for some backup, so... so let's just get to uh, the after you and say then... that, after you say that, she looks off to, to one of the bushes that has now moved, by the way. The bush didn't move, but the, the one that she looked at was not at the same bush, apparently. It looks like she has moved somehow, uh, without you noticing necessarily, but she looks at a different bush, and then she looks back at you, and she just kind of chuckles and shakes her head a little bit. You still walking? Mm-hmm. Everybody walking? Okay. Uh, then a couple more minutes, you guys make your way into the, the outskirts of, of Thermos, uh, past the tower uh, that still looks undisturbed and, and about the only structure that isn't destroyed out here. Um, the the uh, worgen that are in the camp are all kind of stopping. They, they kind of set down their tools and just stand up straight and kind of stare at you as you pass. Uh, you make your way into the camp. Uh, you you uh, in, in towards the center uh, where you had found uh, a Nonway's uh, tent before. Uh, you do find uh, you actually pass Matani, and she shouts. She says, "They're, they're back." I, I, don't, I don't. Did you? What happened? I don't feel any different. She looks uh, like concerned, like some hope is beginning to fade. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell we you what. Found some information. Uh, what was I mean, they can see that we're kind of exhausted and a little beat up, can't they? Yeah. Probably. I mean, you, you are visibly uh, uh, weakened and tired, I would imagine. Um, uh, another another one, you guess is probably male, shouts, says, I, I knew it was hopeless. I knew they wouldn't be able to, to, to complete this. And he looks like angry and frustrated. You guys and, need to learn that patience is a virtue. I'm just going to ask where uh, Nanali is. Uh, Natani, who looks kind of sad now, she kind of just, just points with, with one claw for the tent. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go in to start talking to him. Ask for one to translate to the elves in the trees. Okay. She kind of head down, she kind of holds her, her hands in front of her again. So I'm she... also gonna have put a bandage over her head and cleaned up her wound. I don't know if I had to roll. Um, go ahead and give me a medicine check. It, it, it doesn't need healing at all, but, uh, no. like, yeah, you're fine. Up and Plus 10. It. Yeah. This this might be the only time you ever like see numbers bigger than twenty, Fox. Right, yeah. right. This is good. I mean, you just need really high modifiers so you can't mess it up with with bad dice rolls. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, she is kind of following along, and and just you, Artemis. She she whispers in your mind. She says, "I didn't realize that this was the state of things for them." This mm-hmm. is worrisome. I'm just gonna look at her and nod. <laughs> the amount of. Out, when we sent out the, the, the people from Rethalus, we expected they would just be in the wild, uh, you know, amongst the animals the way that our, our ancestors always did, but this is saddening. I'm going to nod and say, this is why we need to try and resolve it. Among many reasons. Yeah. So I the two of you are going in. Is anybody going into Nonway's tent, or what are the rest of you do? I'm going to stay next to Olowin, whatever okay. she's going She's going into non waste tent, so you'll go with the three of you, Sarah and Norok. I'm going to go find a quiet corner to finish casting Identify on the rest of my stuff. Okay. Um, oh, did you want some of the stuff from the bag of holding to identify? I think we identified all that. I'll be right back, guys. You're outside, Becky, right? Yeah. Okay, okay yeah. Like, yeah, yeah the background noise is super different all of a sudden. I, I think you guys identified all that already. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, then, uh, Sarah, you um, uh, kind of walking off by yourself. Well, I guess where's Norak going, G? I'll go in the uh, non with them. Okay, all right, then, Sarah, you going off by yourself with the broom. Um, you, you find the, uh, the the spot that's against the wall where Pogo had been being slashed at by the werewolves earlier. 
uh, is unoccupied and appears to be a decent enough little kind of a table area, essentially, where you could sit down um, off of the ground and not in the mud, basically, um, and set those uh, the, the items out that you're going to identify. Um, what were you, since uh, Justin's AFK for a second anyways, what were you trying to identify? Um, I think it was just the pearl and the needle. Let me double check. Okay. Yeah, I think it's just the pearls and the needles. All right. Uh, which one are you doing first? Uh, let's do the pearl. Okay. Uh, it is very small. Um, it is about the size of the glass bauble that you use. Um, and just holding the bauble against it with your left hand and then taking the quill in your right and kind of scratching into open air, uh, kind of over your knee as if you would if you were writing onto, uh, you know, onto to paper. Um, you... Uh, finish the, the ritual, trying to discern what its purpose might be. Go ahead and give me your arcana check. Hey, all right, even with your your disadvantage, uh, you discern it is, um, it would be called a pearl of power. Um, it is a, uh, a, a a special thing that if you carry, I think it does require a tune, let's see. Yeah, it requires a command. So whoever attunes to it uh, can use an action to speak a command word and regain one expended spell slot. Uh, if, the spot is, if the slot is fourth level or below the new slot, uh, so basically if the, if the expended slot, hang on, uh, the, the one that you're regaining, if it's fourth level or higher, the new slot is just third level. So if you if you are trying to regain, basically the highest level you can return from it is a three, uh, and then you get it once per day. So for first level, first, second, or third level slot, you can regain once per day. Free level three slot, baby. Yeah. So whoever whoever's attuned to it, it does require attunement. So if you were to trade it, of course, it would you know, unattuning and reattuning to someone else. Otherwise, uh, and the bobble still, you pick it up and look at it. It doesn't appear to have any cracks. Uh, there was one time that you like felt a little small crack in it uh, when you when you finished the casting, but it appears to have healed. The bobble seems to be normal in good shape. It is identified in your backpack now as well. Okay. And then the needle. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give me your arcana check. Um, all right. You hold the bobble against the... There's two needles. Uh, actually, Pogo know. has one. Yeah. So, Pogo, did you give Sarah the other needle at any point for her to identify? Nope. Or, okay. okay. Then, Sarah, you, uh, just with the one, uh, uh, hold the bobble against it and scratch the, the quill in the air uh, as if trying to write down the details of what this, you know, what you're learning from this thing. Uh, let me find my note for it real quick. Do, do, do. Oh. There it is. Uh, this wow. is... <laughs> Uh-oh. I'm not even next oh, to you. Wait, but I can reroll ones. Oh. Uh. oh, wait. Wait, let me check. I think it's just ability check. This is, yeah, this is kind of a special thing. I don't think it would... I, I'm pretty sure that's only for ability checks, saves, and you know attack rolls, that sort. Out of everything my character does, yeah. the best is being able to have other people not roll ones within like yeah. <laughs> uh, thirty or sixty feet. I yep. think that's truly the most helpful thing that I have. And she is outside and at the other side of the camp, and you can't see her. So, mm -mm. yep, I'm screwed. Well, uh, as the mm -hmm. ritual completes, you do feel like you've gathered what this thing can do, at least the most of of what this needle can do. Uh, but as you're finishing it, where you're pinching the, the bobble, the little glass bobble between your, your forefinger and your thumb, it shatters and bits of glass immediately just stab into your thumb. You yank your hand away and kind of flick it and then, you know, droplets of blood splatter along the floor. Uh, as soon as you do, by the way, you, you kind of, there, there's a silence in the camp and you kind of look up like just in this, in this odd silence all of a sudden. And there are three of the dire wolves and two of the werewolves that have, that have stopped and are staring straight at you just instantly. Uh-oh. Hi. There's Quick, a, throw, you know, throw a pad on that or something. <laughs> there, there's kind of an awkward grin uh, from one of them, and and then they kind of shake their heads, and then uh, the two of the wargan look back down. The wolves are kind of sniffing the air and walking your direction slowly. I just get up on the broom and hover like 15 feet up and start <laughs> on my tent. Okay. Uh, what you've gathered from the needles—they—they don't—they weren't walking aggressively. They were just sniffing the air and 
it seems the smell of blood caught their attention. Da, da. Um, <laughs> kind of, yeah. Da, da. John was like, yeah. Uh, the here, I'll give you the note for these knitting needles, or at least the one that you identified. This is it. Uh, I'll just go ahead and tell you that they both they uh, both appear the same anyway, and they have the. So, drop it in the Ember channel for you. Uh, they need to be used together, though. Yeah, so you would need to, to basically they would uh, the attunement would take both needles together, but that's what they do. You guys are welcome to read that. Well, technically, Sarah's the only one that has that information, but. Um, then Sarah making your way to the tent where uh, the rest of the group already are. You step inside everyone. Um, you, you, you pass one very large kind of burly uh, uh, worgen that you hadn't met previously. Um, he just kind of kind of uh, sniffs the air as you're, as you're walking by and he seems his eyes kind of focus on Olo and as she's, as she's floating by. Um, but you float into into the back area where Nonway's table and everything is. Uh, he is still sitting there. looks like he's pouring over some, some parchment like he's got, uh, uh, you know, governing essentially uh, on on paper. And he looks up. He says, uh, "You well, actually, when he looks up and sees you, his shoulders kind of slump a little bit." Says, "I, by the look on your faces, I assume you didn't meet with success, Ben." Uh, yes and no. We know a bit more about what's going on, but it's kind of complicated. It's, yeah, let's just say it's uh, definitely not as easy as we thought it might be, but. We got some chances of solving this still. Uh, the short version is. Oloan asks. She says, "Before you begin, do you want me to broadcast this out so that our uh, observers understand?" Sure. Uh, yes, it is. It is not. Okay. So the short version is: uh, there seems to be a bit of a war between the Gif and Elvid. Um. And what we're trying to fight is, or what is affecting you guys, is uh, from the realm of K. Uh, Oluwen interrupts. She says, to be more precise, it is the warrior chaos. Okay. Precision helps. Nonway, Nonway kind of uh, seems... Uh, not sure, I guess, what to how to respond. He says, "So, what do what do we need to do then? What is, what is our next step?" Uh, we found where some of it is coming from. We followed the trail of coral to Owen's house. They dug a basement, and the coral was leading to the like. The uh, well. When you when you said her name, <clears throat> he he kind of. Uh, sets back a little bit, like steps up straight in his chair and looks at her. He says, Oluwen, is that is that you?" And she kind of kind of lifts her head up. Her head was kind of facing down, where she she just just nods in his direction. I didn't I didn't recognize you. You look so different. Is and I I, I suppose the the worst then for Romana, and she just nods. Then yeah. By the time we got there, his body was completely twisted. Also, if you touch the coral, you end up in a weird other place with... She, he says, please don't speak of that here. Okay. Uh, so, I ended up there, then brought one of my teammates back, so no problem there, but yeah. So, between that and the Warrior of Chaos going to be a tiny bit harder for us to actually do this with. But we did kill two of... We did till, kill a uh, couple of hags that were seemingly helping them, or part of I their... I think they're like, from the other realm, but they end up different here. So we're making forward momentum. That's the rule of golf. <laughs> Keep it moving forward. Forward is progress. I'm just going to look and I'm confused. And tilt my head to the side like, well, what are you talking about? <laughs> All the way interrupt. Will, I, it's how to be your best self. <laughs> this always has to be positive. Always glass half full. Positivity. <laughs> the secret. Yep. Um, Olawen, uh still, still, she kind of settled her head back down again. She says, 
there's there's a bit more to it than that. I mean, you, you, you're piecing it all together, but these these creatures of, of Azol, of, of Chaos, when they come here, they, they they go world to world and absorb the species there and, and mutate them and, and, and bastardize them into creatures of, that are of use to them. The, the, the place you speak of, and she looks up at Nanway, she says, the, the, the place you don't want spoken of, Nanway, that's that's where this this other species came from, these hags, that's what they were. That's what they're doing to us. That's why, and she looks at Nanway again, she says, that's why he is like this. And we're gonna fucking kill them and close whatever thing brought them here. I'm like 90% certain we can do it. <laughs> That's the hope of it. She says the what brought them here is miles beneath the ocean. I, I don't see us being able to reach that, at least not with other means, but we can at least deal with the warrior chaos and, and uh, stop his infection from spreading here on Gwynsair. Sorry, I'm eating soup. Can you guys hear that? It's very I could chunky. tell you were eating. I didn't Hold know on. what it was. But... I'm going to move the mic a little bit further away from him. No, I, I could only tell when you were speaking. I can't hear it otherwise. Oh. Okay. It, was just, it was just like I could tell your, your voice sounded different. <gasps> so I'm going to ask if anybody would care to come along and help. Uh, Nanwe starts to shake his head. Um, and then, uh, like, he, he, he's about to refuse. You can tell just based on, you know, kind of the, the facial expression. Um, but the burly Brownford Worgen that you walked past um, starts stepping into the room and, and uh, Nanwe is already, he's already halfway through saying no, essentially. And he says, Nanwe, I'll, I'll go. I, I don't have long left elsewise. And I would sacrifice everything is needed to bring balance back to this land and to show that our brethren, that we are not all mindless beasts. Some of us remain ourselves. We must help. Is he wearing clothes or anything like that? Or is he just kind of no, he's he's just like most of the rest of the world. Yeah, the, the the lack of modesty around these guys. Well, I mean, they're yeah, you know what? I guess wolves do just have it hanging out there. So yeah. I suppose. I mean, I think it's I it's really like, about that, but it's kind of hanging out there. It's like, I mean, if you scratch behind the ears, it definitely hangs out there. But <laughs> oh, for for Dexter. Uh huh. What did you say, G? Red Rocket was that like yeah. an episode of Park or something? Yeah, it was South oh, Park. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we were just talking about that in our other game. Again, too, like around uh, Thursday, too, actually. Did uh, we? Yeah, that, Liam that brought it up. Off the rails. Like, yeah. Off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's, that's kind of gross. I'm just going to change the subject here. So. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, but the, uh, the the one that had stepped in from behind, uh, uh, Nanwe, he's kind of staring at him silently, and then and then uh, he says, as, as you wish, Launder, but I don't expect you'll return, so we need to say our goodbyes and, and take record before you leave. And he nods. He says, "I mean, I'll, I'll do it myself." Uh, uh, Pogo, the list that Nanway gave you earlier. This guy was on there. He is a he is the the name that uh, Nanway gave you. That was the priest of the law of the Gem of Lost Memories. Oh. He's, he's a priest, but he's a big burly uh, uh, worgen as well. Uh, although you did notice when he walked in because he kind of stepped past you because you're you know very small. Um, so he just kind of plodded by. Uh, well, actually, you're Artemis shape right now, so you're a little bit bigger. But anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, he's got a pronounced limp. Uh, he's kind of plodding himself forward like he's dragging a leg a little bit. Um, but anyways, Launder, the name that, that uh, you recognize there, Nanwe had told you earlier, was the priest of the Gem of Lost Memories, which is the elven religion. Okay, I'm going to look at him and say thanks. If there's any other volunteers, would you mind rounding up? And I don't then... expect any, but I'm certainly willing to try. Okay, because all the help we get, like, we'll try to do our best to keep everybody alive and coming back, but at the same time, this is something from a different realm. It's not easily done. And a glorious death is the best death. <laughs> these, aren't, these aren't fucking, uh, God damn it! what's that Star Trek guy with the messed up forehead? Rangi? Klingons. Klingons, Klingons. yeah. The, these aren't the Klingons that want a fucking glorious death. These are elves. I'd say, I'd say uh, Vulcans are more like space elves, so. Was that the one, the show that you had me watch with the space elf? I have no idea. Vulcans are also from Star Trek. They're just yep. a different kind I'd of say I remember them being pointy ears. There was, there was a super hot girl. Ears. Yeah, there was a super hot girl with pointy ears. I just don't remember if she was a Vulcan. Well, Romulans and Vulcans 
both have yeah. pointy ears, but Vulcans would definitely be more elf-like. Uh, uh, those are the logic ones, though, right? Isn't that what Spock is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are the ones with like a lot of logic. The Romulans are more like militant. Uh, I get that. That might, in that case, how the hell do I even know this? <laughs> I've watched every episode of the Next Generation. I like the Next Generation. I didn't like mostly. I liked uh, uh, with the black guy, the the deep, deep space, deep space deep, nine. Not, yeah, I like that one too. Um, I don't think I liked any of the others. I watched um, the one you had me watch one of the other ones, though, Justin. It was okay. I watched like the first handful of the episodes of it, and that's the one that had the space elf chick that was super hot. I don't know. It was like. 10, 15 years ago, you asked me to watch that. There's there, Voyager, there's... No, it wasn't that. Discovery, there's Deep Space Nine, there's... No. That's all I can think it, of. It had, uh, it had um, Scott Bakula in it. Yeah, that was Discovery. Yeah, like that's, Scott the, that's the... It's a prequel that came out in, like, 2000 and... It's called Discovery? Okay, I didn't remember that. Okay. I think it's called Star Trek yeah, Discovery. But I, I like that one, though. I just I didn't finish it. I probably should. It was a good show. Anyway, um, so... Uh, but the, the one that... Uh, the big guy, Launder... Uh, which is L O N D R R, by the way. Laundry, uh, he, got it. Yeah, uh, he he kind of is. You hear him dragging his foot, kind of making his way back out. Um, but with your, uh, give me persuasion check on Artemy, and Pogo spoke a little bit too. So the two of you, give me persuasion checks. That's a really low persuasion check for a Pogo. Yeah. So not and, bad. There's a, you know, and a normal one for Artemy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, the, the, uh, Oluwen is still standing there, kind of head down, like she's listening and then sending the information out as the information you get. Um, Nanwe asks, where did you find this? Well, I, I guess some more detail on what you found there might be useful to see if there are other ways we might be able to help. Well, we followed the coral trail and it ended up in Oluwen's house. We went inside, ended up in a basement that the two hands were making violence in, and then we went down into the well, which is where we found all the wind. And she explained some of it. We got her out because we didn't want to go any further after having. She was at the bottom of a well. Yeah. He's kind of he's kind of looking at a well. Is it is practically a well that then led to an entire underground. What would you call that? An underground, almost oasis with okay. tree, their own trees, and there's a river coming from like a maybe a ocean entrance, but she it would look up. polluted or disgusting and dirty. And she was there. I found a shield. <laughs> <laughs> Important details, all right. Uh, all the way looks up. Uh, she says he's in the Nereverin Bay Cavern, uh, where I used to swim as a girl. And turn, uh, uh, non Wade nods. He says, I, I know the bit, the caverns. I know what she speaks of then. Yeah, but it, it's like a well, like it's a hole in the, in the basement of her house that's going into the cap. So it's. Like it was dug through? Yes. Her house is on the bluff above. That must have, that tunnel would have to be 100 feet long. Yeah. It's yes. Terrible. It's straight down. 100 but, feet long. You know, long, we, can, we can probably. I mean, if you have a boat, maybe we can get to the outskirts of that, instead. Maybe we don't have to climb uh, down that hole every time. We, we can't what? really touch the water, though. Why can't we touch uh, water? Well, the water in the cavern is completely polluted. If we touch it... Oh, let's get a boat! Uh, give me persuasion checks again, the two of you. Uh, Sarah, you would have arrived at this point after identifying the two... Uh, there like it that. is! <laughs> Everyone will do everything I say! And then Artemis, you know, her, her natural back to her normal state. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, what is Nark doing, G? Sarah's coming and floating in behind you on the broom. As I walk uh, in, I'm just wrapping my fingers. <laughs> uh, you didn't, when you passed Launder, by the way, he was kind of staring straight at your hand as you walked by. You might have been licking his chops slightly. Yeah, I'm gonna flip to the other side of the room. <laughs> What was Nork doing, G? Uh, as usual, I'm not saying much. I'm just moving or moving my eyes around and making sure no uninvited guests are coming in, that kind of thing. Norok needs like a hobby or something. He needs to oh, yeah. he needs to do something if he's not talking and just walks all the time and carries. I vote, I vote for whittling. Yeah, just, that's what I'm thinking. But instead like, of like, like a normal thing, like a giant six-inch like 
five, six foot long piece of wood. Like a mat, like something you could whittle into like an actual weapon eventually. Like push, push a tree over and then just carry it on your shoulder and whittle at it, you know, until it, until it becomes a. And then know, every time you go into battle, just drop it and, pick and get it, it up. <laughs> we did just get those needles. I could get into crocheting. I could make a cool <gasps> little hat. Did you guys read that, by the way? Did you guys read how that works? No, I, I don't think. Oh, was read. it in Discord? Yeah, I dropped it in Discord. Now, I Sarah's the only one that actually knows how to Private works. information, yeah. No, I dropped it in the Ember's channel so everybody can see it. So you guys can decide. Well, assuming that Sarah would tell everybody, I probably should have given that up to, or given that to just Sarah so that she could decide. But since Pogo is carrying the other one, it wouldn't do any good until we were together. I would wait until we were alone to tell them this. A whole then... cup of blood? Good yeah, and then I'm yeah. giving the other needle to Pogo. You can have both. Okay. okay. Pogo does have this. Like, you guys have given Pogo a lot of good shit. A lot shit. of shit. I've yeah, got, well, I've got two. I've got, actually, I guess if you include, yeah, I've got a few things. Yeah, that lithic, that lithic of life stealing is pretty badass too. However, so. I am keeping the power, the pearl of power, and not saying a word about it. Okay, uh, you were the only one that knew it existed in the first place because mm -hmm. you found it, remember? So nobody else even knows that that exists. Yeah, I was uh, attention. Yeah, this does. The, both of these require two minutes. So you'll need to actually spend a short rest to use them, but. Anyways, um, with that that uh, second roll that I was having roll that, uh, you see Oluwen grin a little bit, and she looks up. She looks over at Artemy. She looks at Pogo. She says, uh, "Our friends out there seem a little more amenable. It seems she may have a plan." Okay, let's hear it. They're still talking. I don't think they realize I can hear them. Nonway seems slightly disturbed now at this point. Uh, I'm just gonna say that she's turning into an illithid, and we. Oh! Have... You're just gonna outright say that? <laughs> okay. Uh, you say that, Does and she uh, even non know? <laughs> well, Nonway's uh, claw, both of his uh, hands. He was still holding the papers, like he like hadn't had a chance to even really, you know, to, to kind of stop himself. He was so shocked at this information of you guys arriving. Uh, but he kind of throws the paperwork out on the on the table. Both hands slam on the table, and he stands himself up with his full weight. You hear the table creak beneath his his, uh, his, his shoulders of him standing up. Uh, he's not even a big werewolf, but as far as you know, the size of that is still quite a bit considering that this is old wood. But he stands up. There's kind of this dust puff, uh, puffing off of away from him. He says, "She's she's what? She's what?" What's and going Oluwen on? Just, Oluwen just looks up looks up at him. She says. It's it's okay. Just sit, and you see. Uh, uh, it would look like invisible hands pushing him back down into the chair. Essentially, it looks like gravity is essentially pulling him back down to the chair uh, as he's kind of forced back into his seat against his will. It's clear that he's trying to fight against it until he's sitting back down again. She says, "I, I, I mean no threat to anyone here. I, I just will take care of the the warrior in the caverns, and once he's gone, I'll." I'll be gone. So I mean, the illithid... Yeah, I mean, really, if you think about it, it's just... it's they're, they're, they're just a race, and they can choose to be good or bad. You're not born... evil, really? Right? They're not, they're not born... Donway's kind of uh, struggling. It's it, the, it seems like the Force is still pushing him down, and it might be hard for him to speak because of that, while he's straining against it. He says they're not born at all. They they convert others into to this... And, and uh, to, to other things, if that's what she's turning into, Olo and I'm sorry, we, we, and she just cut, uh, she, the, it's maybe the strain is too much for him. He's cut off there. I was going to gently say, uh, you might want to release the pressure. Just gently touch her arm. She just looks at you and she looks back at him and then, and then he like stands, like his half stands up again as he's, the, the weight that he was fighting against is disappears and he's kind of, you know, pushed against that until he's half standing again. <clears throat> he takes a deep breath. I'm just gonna say, okay, relax. This is going She's swimming. Still communicating as herself, uh, other than a few, I guess, internal conflicts, but she still mainly herself. Is this true, Olowen? And she just, without looking at him, she just nods. She slowly reaches her hands up and starts undoing the bandage that you wrapped around her head. And while you're standing there, you know, no one reacting, she 
finishes uh, pulling enough of it away and kind of turns her head to the side to, to, you know, show the hole in the side of her head to him. He says, I see. Um, I'm gently going to help her retie it properly. He says, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Ola, when I, I, I guess I don't know what to say. With the loss, you know, of, of, of Ramanath, that's no surprise you would want vengeance, and if you're able to help, then certainly we would appreciate it. Just, I, I don't think we would be able to welcome you back. And she just nods. And uh, Artemis, since you're helping her, there's uh, there's tears in her eyes. You can see it close enough, but it's probably in a distance, especially since it's kind of dark in the tent here that others may not be able to see it. Mm-hmm. So I would still just be on the shoulder, just like giving comfort. On Olawin's shoulder? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, if you're tying it around her head, she's kind of going to be in the way a little bit, but that's fine. So you finish tying it off, and she just kind of stands there like she's, you know, listening still. Nonway's just silent. He seems in shock. Do you guys have any medium armor? Oh, the best possible time. <laughs> Maybe she can now and out of the shock? I don't know. Well, I mean, he does kind of, you know, like taken aback and, and surprise a little bit. What do I've you decided think? that this is going to be a very difficult mission. You, you, I, you're small at best. I don't see how you're going to wear meat from armor. Well, I mean, larger. are you telling me your kids don't battle or fight? I just need, like, children's medium sized armor. <laughs> Just, just throw it out there. <laughs> you know, for for when you said you throw them into battle, <laughs> you need to put armor on them. We're going into a very dangerous situation, so if you have any armored children, maybe I could borrow it. <laughs> it's not a requirement, or this. Don't need uh, it. It seems, it nice. seems like the the tension in the room has alleviated a little bit with Justin's ridiculous joke or Pogo's ridiculous joke, but uh, <laughs> he says, uh, "Um, I mean, I don't know that we have anything that would." be suitable for you necessarily, but we might be able to throw something together. You know, at least give you the best odds that we possibly can. Alright, well... If you have some leather, I could fashion him a bit of arm. You can do that? That's a, that's a, I mean, the same, almost the same way that they might be able to, you know, a proper skill that could make something a little better, but uh, uh, you know, for medium would be something like chain, uh, like a chain shirt is medium. Um, that That's not just leather. Leather... Or medium for I think the lowest medium is hide if I remember right, which you could you could do for sure, Fox. Um, but the AC bonus is less for that than it is for something like chain. Yeah, but at least he'd give him a bit of protection, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're you're not a you know an armor smith that that is a special skill, but you could craft something together that is you know would at least be functional, if not mm-hmm. full effectiveness, maybe half the effectiveness of what the regular armor would be. It would at least be something, you know, right? Something. Yeah. Maybe even add a bit more to the shield, fix it up. Th- that shield is pretty broken. Like it's basically like that. That you'd be made, almost making a new one. It's basically just a wooden round shield with uh, with a metal ring around the outside. And I the feel metal like in, in my mind, I'm holding up like the back of a broken piece of wicker furniture. <laughs> um, <laughs> think, think like trash can lid, except made of wood. <laughs> hey, like trash can don't. Lid. Oh, awesome. I was thinking of like fixing the the metal part with like leather and then just like polishing it. Uh, I mean, maybe, but at that point, I mean, shields aren't necessarily hard to come by. There are there are shields here in the camp for sure. Oh, okay, in, that's true. You know, so, uh, if you know, if, if this was the only one you was that was out there and you needed to fix it up, you probably would be worth doing that. But since there are enough out here that, that you could probably just grab one. Uh, well, then maybe I should see if there's any armor for my size that we're here too. Um, what was your, let's see, you can wear uh, medium and shield. Yeah, you can have medium and shield as well. They just have to be non-metal, so it would be like high for you. Yeah. Um, okay. They definitely have, you know, elven uh, uh, design, so, you know, they, they, they can't wear it anymore anyway, so that still would be around here somewhere. Oh, yeah, I would ask if they have any spare armor for me. Sure. Uh, Nonway says, I mean, we'll, we'll certainly do whatever we can to equip you all for the, 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 the best odds that we can get. Especially for things that we're not even using ourselves. Ooh, and maybe since we've read somewhat of it. And if you have a few small spare weapons, it could be useful. I mean, you're welcome to what we have here, at least at the moment, since you've somehow managed to earn us a, uh, a, a stay from the 
constant attacks of, of our brethren out there. You know, we, we don't necessarily need them at the moment as long as this standstill can hold. I'll nod and ask Alwyn what's going on with the She She holds a finger up like she's still listening. Oh. Uh, they're, they're still arguing. Uh, it seems... And she uh, she kind of holds... Okay, so she, she pauses to like stop for a second. She looks up at Nanwe. She says, your daughter is out there. They're arguing. You say yeah, you're... Holding her head up. Dude, someone's daughter is out there? She looks at Nanwe when she says that. Mm-hmm. I'll just nod. Olowen is from here, remember. She's from this town, so she knows these people. She says, Wait, who's, I, whose daughter is out there? Nanway's daughter. He just got his head down. Oh. One of the I'm elves. Sorry, that you, uh, one of the elves that was out there with the group was his daughter. You guys, the one that was holding the uh, the red haired elf that was holding the the little idol that was forcing you to tell, or at least would identify if you were trying to lie. That was his daughter. And uh, Oluwen, though, standing there going over all this. Artemé had got she, she recognized that earlier and had talked to Nanway about it. She just hadn't told you guys that you guys don't talk amongst yourselves at all. Like, well, you... no, I didn't think that was like it wasn't <laughs> my thing to share. That's fine. Uh, but anyways, uh, uh, as she's still kind of holding a finger up like she's listening to them arguing back and forth. Um, she she kind of Yeah, Sanwi is Nanway's daughter. The the red haired elf that was uh that was holding the little idol that was the cone in front of you, her name was Sanway, and that's Sanway's daughter. <clears throat> but she's still an elf while well, he's you know a worgen now, obviously. So anyways, um but uh Olowen finishes uh listening, it seems like, and she kind of kind of uh, closes her eyes and then opens them up uh, again looking at you. She says it seems they've come to an agreement. Um Therese knows the, the cave that you were speaking of. She. They're already leaving. They're on their way now. Okay. She says they have a plan. Do you be more detailed on what their plan is? Does it involve, you know, murdering us? Or what is their plan? No. Vengeance in mind, certainly, but not. Doesn't seem towards us. Now that they know what the target is and where to find it, it seems they're uh, similar to the, the furry friend that, that just walked by. Launder. Uh, can can we tell them somehow plan. to wait until tomorrow? Tell them. So, does anyone have a way to tell them that we can wait till tomorrow? She just she nods at you. She says, I, "I just told them." No, oh, I don't know if that was the greatest idea, but all right. <laughs> that's that's fine. We're, we're, we'll she join says, them. Says they they are confused. Yeah, that, we'll wait. do it. Tell them we'll go with them tomorrow and tell them. And- <laughs> yeah, that's you're, fine. you're giving confusing messages. What do you want me to tell them? We'll go with them tomorrow if they would like to wait. Tell them, please wait. We'll go with them tomorrow to destroy the scourge on this island. Just Once and for all. Them. And say it with <laughs> some gusto. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she says... Tell Teresa she'll meet us there. Okay. Should we? Should we? Nah, they they'll probably know that it's the cabin. If they go to the the water's edge and try to get in that way, then we'll find them down there. But hopefully they understand. They I think heard it. Like you said I I translated everything. I sent it out to. They they know. All right. We need to uh, discuss boundaries with how this works with the speaking and what they can hear. They don't have to hear everything. <laughs> so maybe uh, we'll tell you if we need them to hear things because it might be too confused. Like, are they hearing this right now? Are you like a court reporter with a stenographer? Just <laughs> the exact words? How is this? I stopped sending of... when, I, when I spoke to you about it. Okay. I did ask before Let's we began. To... When we came in here, I asked. Yeah, you know... <sighs> yeah, well, anything relevant to what was happening in the cave and etc. Okay. It's fine. No long-term damage done. 
<laughs> you're, just, you're just glad that you guys didn't say fuck her. We're gonna we're gonna murder her when we get out there or something. Well, I, we're not gonna. That's what I'm saying. Like you did, you guys didn't say anything that bad necessarily. It's still weird. I mean, of course, she would have heard. Gives it, me but. an ooky feeling. No, other people are just listening to everything we're saying. Okay, so she I'm gonna says, go see if I can find anything for dinner. And it's it's one thirty in the. Oh no, sorry, it took you an hour and a half to get here. It's like three p.m. Yeah. All right. So we. I think we need to find, make sure armor's as good as we can get it for right now. Yeah, armor, if you, uh, stock up on a few weapons, stock up on food for dinner, and whatever else. So I'm going to go. Well, Nanway says, uh, we'll, we'll take care of food. Um, you know, just, just uh, when, you, when you head out there, at least, just really anyone. But if you see Cardo, ask him to, to grab us any gear that might be useful for you. Cardo and Ferrender both would be, would be useful for you. Perfect. Okay. And he gets up and starts kind of, uh, uh, you know, making his way out, but waiting for you guys or in front. When you guys, well, if, uh, Sarah and Nora are going too, I assume? Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, when you step out, because you guys, Nora kind of can't really get past him. The place isn't big enough. So Nora kind of has to go first uh, with Sarah, you know, floating nearby. But uh, when you uh, step out, Launder is uh, standing by the doorway with a, Sack, like a leather sack thrown over his shoulder. He says, "I'm, I'm ready when you are, guys. Just um, you know, let me let me know. Is there anything useful I might grab? You know, I, I haven't seen the place. I don't really know what we're what we're heading into. Uh, I mean, a fight. Have you ever been in a fight? I mean, it's, it's kind of stabbing and attacks and." He just, kind of, defend he just kind of flexes his, his, uh, his claws out, like extending his fingers and then rolling them back. Those those are okay. But I mean... That's really, the- my my purview before all of this change was more on the, the other side of things, of the mending of, of wounds rather than the causing of wounds. I mean, that's super helpful too, but just try to not die, and then that's the best you can do. The gem will protect me. I mean, jam uh, is good. Best. Have you ever had peanut no. butter and jam? <laughs> I'm a big fan of that. <laughs> There's no way, like, every single goddamn word Justin tries to find some way to make it, like, a, a, a pun, even when they don't really... It's delightful. Really... <laughs> um, you make it down a uh, rope with those claws without shredding it? I can't say I've tried. I mean, these are, these, these are just a uh, DM question. Werewolves have like opposable thumbs, right? Like they have like yeah, motion have, in their they hands. Have, yeah, They're they not have, like yeah. dog paws because that would no, be real so, fucking tricky. Um, yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, well, they 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 actually actually can go between. Uh, well, normally they would be able to go between their hu- normal humanoid form, uh, a wolf form, and then the hybrid, which is which is in front of you. These guys are basically stuck in hybrid, except for some that are stuck in wolf form, and then a few that can go between. Anyways, but these most of these appear to be stuck in like full on werewolf form. With uh, like opposable thumbs and you know dog feet essentially, so human hands, dog feet, kind of. Maybe we'll just skip you using the rope and we'll just use feather fall on you. We'll, fi- we'll figure it out. Uh, rope would be hard. Uh, if you have any armor, we're gonna try to find some better armor to make sure that this is the best case scenario for us. We've uh, tried. We've tried making armor to suit our our current conditions, and it's not come to the best results. We usually end up just throwing it off. It, it, it seems to impede our movement too much faster like this. All right. Kind of like any you know, kind of kind of gestures with his snout towards uh, towards Norok. Kind of like that. Sure. Yeah, he's a beastie of a man too. Yeah, but you see how he's not weighed down in metal armor, metal weaponry. Sometimes I make him carry me if I'm really tired. <laughs> he kind of grins at you. Well, let's see. Uh, that should be any... I mean, anything you can think of that might help. You can think it over. We're not going to be doing this till the morning, but whatever you think. And Pogo's going to actually kind of go off and he's going to go walk away a little bit and uh, he's going to sit down by his, himself with his own thoughts. And he's going to pull those daggers out and he's going to start carving in them. Okay. Then uh, you find a... In fact, actually, that uh, Artemis grew previously is still there. The dome is not, but the tree is still there. 
Uh, you make your way over to that part of the camp and just sit down at its base. Uh, it is relatively shady since the tree is kind of a wide stump uh, with, with branches that would grow up and out. There's no leaves on the branches at the moment, but uh, uh, the, you know it is a nice shady spot where you can sit there with those daggers. Cool. You already made the rolls for those, by the way, Justin. You made them like six weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, it was a minute. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was still back in Dunscathic, actually, at the, the Crowfort. Um, well, I think so that was those... the first time, and then I rolled through Discord for a second time, but it just never came up again. Well, no, I'd asked you a few times if you were going to do it, and you kept, you wouldn't, you didn't want to do it with anybody oh, around. Oh, that's right, yeah. That's yeah, right. and you just haven't had a time by yourself since, or at least you haven't said anything about it, but that's why I stopped yeah. asking, because you said that you would You are it. correct. So, anyways, you uh, sit down, though, but the rolls are already done, so as far as the results, that's all taken care of. So uh, Pogo has gone off by himself. Uh, Launder has wandered off to go, uh, you know, to try to grab whatever other useful things he might find. Uh, Nonway has, has disappeared as well. What are the rest of you guys doing? I'm going to go find uh, Cardo and Brenda to look at the other Okay. Um, the Launder kind of pointed you in their direction as he was leaving. Um, but the, the camp, uh, I still have the map, but anyways, the, the the area, uh, Justin, where you were up on the, the boards and then they came out from like a tent kind of an area, that's where, where these two are. Uh, not that it matters for Pogo because Pogo's off by himself. But uh, from over there, though, you find two two very large uh, werewolves that appear to be asleep when you come around the corner. Okay. I'm not going to wake them up. Well, you're off by yourself. So your Pogo's off doing his thing. This is Artemis. Oh, I thought you said Pogo. I was like... No, Pogo, this is the area that they came out from before. The two yeah. that came out and were swiping at you when you were up on the boards, that's these two. Georgie? Okay, um, I talk to the dog. Oh. I'm going to gently wake them up and ask if they have any spare um, elven armor. Uh, you, you reach out to kind of shake the shoulder of one. This is kind of very thick furred shoulder. Uh, and there's a snarling sound that comes from it. It doesn't open its eyes. I'll try the other one. <laughs> All right. uh, you kind of gently uh, shake the shoulder of the other, and the eyes kind of flicker open a little bit. Um, uh, looks younger of the two. The other one seems a little more gruff, maybe an older. Um, and, and the eyes kind of flicker open, uh, looks up at you. Uh, Miss, what, what, what can I do for you? Nano, I said you could direct me to where you guys keep the armor, the armor and weapon. He kind of chuckles. Uh, armory. <laughs> uh, all of that that isn't much use to us these days. And, and he kind of points, you, you see the, just the big furred arm kind of point. Uh, those crates over there, dig through them, anything that you can find that would be of use, you're welcome to. Thank you. Sorry for waking you from your nap. He just kind of nods and kind of snuggles his head back into his arm. Okay, I'm gonna go to the crates and dig through. Okay. What are Pogo? Pogo. What are Sarah and Norak doing? Well, Ben's taking the dog to the bathroom, so I am going to. I'm gonna go back. No, I'm gonna go find a different quiet corner from the one where I bled all over. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna. Take a look at my scroll because it's been a few hours. Okay. You then hop on the broom and uh, out from the from uh, Nonway's tent. Off to the left, there there doesn't appear to be any wargan in that direction. You do see Pogo sitting at the base of the tree that Artemy had formed. Uh, you kind of sail past him over to that other corner uh, where there are some crates, and the crates are stacked wide enough that there's kind of a spot that you can sit down on without having to sit in the dirt. Um, it, they, they're pretty dirty themselves, but at least it's not on the ground. Um, but that, that spot there, you settle down or set down, um, and, you know, set the broom beside you. The broom kind of tries to, to curl itself, like trying to push itself up into your arms and your lap. Uh, and you pull out the scroll case, uh, and unfurl it. And sure enough, there is a new letter on there, uh, that I will bring up. If I can find the right one, there it is. There you go. Oh shit. I showed that to everybody. I meant to only share that to Sarah, but not that it matters. <clears throat> okay, it'll take me a minute to read this. Sure. 
So, and uh, is back. back. Okay. Yeah. All right, do what's north doing. Everybody has kind of gone their own separate ways to do whatever, you know, preparations they're going to do. What is Nark doing? Um, I guess just going to find, we'll probably send them to eat and then rest, right? Because we're, we're back with the uh, working camp, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, see if I can find something to eat and then somewhere to rest. Okay. Um, then the... The food, the place where you went that was kind of a temporary mess hall kind of a, a room earlier uh, is actually beside the direction that Artemis went. So you're kind of following her for a little ways uh, and you can smell food coming from it. Uh, you step inside that the, the, the uh, tent height is almost perfect for you because these guys are, of course, much larger. Uh, so you don't even really have to, to duck like you are almost used to anytime you step into a humanoid settlement because uh, nobody builds for yogs. Uh, but you step your way inside. Uh, it smells like, like mutton, like they must have had a, a lamb, which you range because picturing a lamb or a sheep really out in, in this uh, biome seems very odd, but uh, it does smell like mutton. But maybe you're quite certain that's what it is. Um, but you settle down and the, the female uh, Morgan was in here before. Uh, I don't know if you caught her name. Her name was Connie. Um, but she uh, she kind of looks at you. She says, are you are you hungry, dear? Uh, as usual. Yes, thank you. Well, coming right up. I'm afraid we don't have you know, much variety, but as long as you're you're not a, a averse to some mutton, then uh, we'll get you filled up. Yeah, I'm not thank you. Um, and she, you know, goes about to bring some over before you set the plate in front of you. Do anything else or just eating? G? No, nope, just eating. But mutton always makes me think of that episode of Seinfeld, where he just puts it in his pocket in the in the napkin because he doesn't like mutton when he's at that lady's or that girl's house or whatever, and then like the dogs start following him around. Chasing down the rock, remember that one? I don't remember that at all. That's what it makes me. That's what it makes me when I see mutton. That's what it makes me think of. So. Who does that? Who is it? The George? No, it was Jerry. I think Jerry puts mutton in his pocket. Yeah, because he's dating a girl and she makes mutton and he doesn't like it, so he takes it and puts it in his pocket, like pretends he's eating it, and then the dog, the dogs start following him around because he has food in his pocket. He nice. like a trail with dogs chasing him down the neighborhood. So. I don't remember like a whole lot of that show anymore. I mean, that was it was a long time ago, and I probably only saw each of them. You know, some of the ones that were on reruns all the time back when TV, you know, normal TV. Uh, I probably saw some of those more often, but probably most of them I'd only seen once. That's but anyway, <clears throat> Norark is eating. Uh, then we'll go back to Pogo. Uh, dagger carving is is going about just fine. Uh, it, assuming that you're not doing anything else, if it's just taking the span of the afternoon for you. Uh, then you probably hour and a half or so you should be finished, uh, at least with the rough kind of rough carvings of it. So you can you know right. fine tune a bit if you want to more. I'll put those back in my bag, and let's see. It being late afternoon, I think I'm going to go grab an early dinner. And okay. uh, if I see anyone on the way, um, the the uh, I'll ask if they have any heads up on the equipment situation. Or if we should do that after after I eat. Um, I mean, the we'll, we'll come back depending on who's cool. gone where, but you probably at least find most likely Norwalk depending on the state. Um, but, but you put the daggers away then and, and head off towards the, the, the kind of mess hall area. Uh, Sarah, the oh, sorry, no, but for Artemis, then digging through the boxes there, there are many, many, many uh, well carved. They're not in, they're not being well taken care of, meaning that they're you know could use some, some cleaning probably. Uh, but for some very well made um, uh, knives, some short swords, um, but a lot of elven chain, uh, elven style chain mail, which is medium armor. Uh, it is metal, but it's, it's very much of a, uh, of a kind of an elegant and, and uh, uh, light functional style without producing uh, physical movement so much. Um, specifically, mechanically, it wouldn't impose a mechanical disadvantage to stealth, which they normally would. Okay. Um, uh, I guess I'll find the smallest one I can for Pogo, because I okay. can't work here. I'm just looking to see if I could find anything that's, um, hide or, yeah, hide. Sure. And then, uh, for the sword, the knives and the swords, I'll clean them off, and I'll give Pogo one of the short swords when I see him. Okay. Um, then in that case, you, you dig through as best you can. Uh, there isn't a lot that's in the way of hide specifically. Uh, but you do find a kind of a chitinous uh, set that looks like it was made for someone. Like it, this looks 
personalized. It looks like it was intended for a specific person because this, it's not mass manufacturer. It's not the kind of thing that somebody would just crank out over and over, you know, copies of. Um, but it, it's, it's kind of a, a shell almost like a, like a hard shell to it. Um, you kind of wrap your fingers again or your knuckles against it. And it seems strong. It seems like it would work well enough. Certainly. Um, it would probably still impose some amount of, of noisiness to it if you were to try to sneak while wearing it. Uh, but it, it does seem, you know, as, as, as hard as you could probably get without getting too metal, almost bone like. Okay, I'm gonna um, polish it and like clean it up really good and then use that. And then what? Uh, use that. Okay. Um, it does have some, some kind of quick, quick snap style buckles. Um, buckles that. that they're covered by plates, but those plates, if you personally lift them up, I mean, if someone knew where they were, they could lift the plates up and unbuckle it and, and the armor would fall off. Uh, but, since, you know, as long as you know where they are, you can take it off quickly. Uh, the reason being that there's a reason that I point that out. Normally, medium armor takes uh, a full minute to put on or take off, um, called donning and doffing, uh, meaning that if you needed to do something sneaky, it would take you a full minute to take all the armor off before you could stealth. Uh, but if you know where these, these kind of quick release buckles are, you could get the plates off very quickly, uh, meaning you'll only take an action to take the armor off. Or... So keep that in mind. But you notice that while you're cleaning it up. Okay. Uh, so you grabbed all, all of that, uh, and then I guess where are you going after you find all the. Are you going to spend some time cleaning it up then? Yeah, I'm going to spend some time cleaning it up. Okay. Then we will come back because you'll stay. Or if you're still there doing that, then we will skip over to Norak. Uh, you finish your your meal uh, with Natani in the, the mess hall. Um, it, it's pretty quiet. It's getting you know late in the afternoon. It's still not evening time, but it seems that a lot of the wolves are nocturnal, and so there are, is a lot of activity going on at the moment. They're still working in the main camp, but not here and non or in the main part of the town, but not here and non with. Camp. So, what are you doing? Find somewhere to sleep. Okay. Um, as soon as you step out off to your right, uh, you see two very large, um, uh, worgen that are laying down on these kind of, uh, bed rolls almost on the, on the floor, on the ground. Uh, you do see Artemy, um, grab, like very carefully scrubbing at armor, uh, like this kind of greenish scale armor, uh, with a cloth, uh, kind of leaned over a crate and doing that. Uh, but it seems, you know, as good of a place as any, he's not making very much noise. All right, then you go in and lay down on the sack there to try to get a you know some shut eye in. Uh, it's not quite you know long rest time. But you can at least certainly relax for a little bit. Um, it's late enough in the afternoon. I was I guess you would still say that you could because it's not you, know, you guys woke up at like eight a.m. and it's like five p.m. at this point. So I suppose you probably could at least try to sleep. Uh, how about Sarah? I'm gonna try to study those sigils. So the two that you identified before, uh, if you go to your channel, Becky, mm -hmm. um, the the rolls that you made, if you scroll up, you'll see the green. You see which one I'm talking about? Uh, yep. Okay. So those were the five digits. Those were the three that, or the five that you were trying to identify. The two that you got were the, the one that's in the top right and the bottom right. And the top right was uh, Eclipse and the bottom right is Emptiness are the two that you identified. Um, so using those from what he's described to you, you can try to using context clues. I'm basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the DC a little bit easier, uh, for the other three to try to figure out what they meant. Uh, so give me three more arcana checks. Um, so I can interrupt, but was there also, um, a, maybe a, a shield that was similar to the arm? That was similar to the chain, the elven chain? Similar to the green uh, the scales. shell, the scales, yeah. Um, give me a give me an investigation check. Okay, and I was all, I'd also look for um a shield for uh, Pogo. A child size. Could use, yeah. <laughs> I like the child size <laughs> armor. You're equipping <laughs> children for war. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out how this is gonna work. If I'm in Artemis' body to put on armor that would fit. That's the, true, you know. I guess sure it, I, I, didn't, it I didn't specify the uh, the, the the sizing. Like we can of the just carry it. And we can just carry it for right now. For yeah, that's what I was it. thinking. Sure, uh, I'll say that you, you found each other at some point for that. What's that? Yeah, 
got minus I, I, all three of my rolls. You did. You got max. Yeah, you rolled like like a like the the fox all of a sudden. Rolling for the worst possible outcome, anyways. You got minus four from her exhaustion on each of the deep oh, Do I be able to use lesser restoration on it? Uh, exhaustion. I mean, you could have. You know, uh, just, you would have needed to have so over. You could have. <laughs> I'll be I'll be right back, guys. All right. Okay. Um, with your studying of those, uh, Sarah, the you you identify the first one, um, which is the I think it's the the one in the bottom left. Let me check again real quick. I have my map of this. Trying to compare it against that. What these sigils are. Yeah, so the top right was Eclipse, which you identified. The bottom right was what you got. And then you just got. You cut it out on the second one. What was the second one? Uh, the bottom right is Emptiness. Okay. Uh, and the first one, which is Moon, you identified Moon as well this time. And that is the, the left. So uh, I'll draw on here real quick. Uh, that one that I descended that on. This one that is moon. I closed it. I gotta find it again. Okay. Uh, yep, found it. So that one's moon. You, you just figured that one out. Uh, this one here is eclipse, and this one is emptiness. Uh, so you'll need to spend some more time with it to try to get the other. Okay. Uh, after that, I'm going to go find Nonway. Okay. Nonway. But just none. Did you say a weemba way? I said non no way. Oh, it non sounded no like way. in the right in the right cadence of that of that song. Um, in the jungle. <laughs> uh, Artemis, well, you guys are in an, an accidental jungle now. Which, of course, by the way, Artemis, you recognize that this island normally isn't jungular. Uh, it's a you know, it would normally be foresty, uh, but the the humidity is through the basically the ecology was really messed up by the vine lash, so everything has kind of become a little more wet, like steep plants and so on, like rainforest. Uh, anyway, uh, in looking around, though, uh, you didn't see one near there, but when you go outside to try to find a shield for Pogo, uh, there are shields all along the wall, and it seems that they've placed them against the wall uh, in certain places, maybe you know, protect from arrows a little bit and that kind of thing, uh, spots where there are holes, flats of the wood. I remember there's kind of a ramshackle uh, fortress here. Uh, yeah. Uh, but you, the, the shields are kind of put up against them. Uh, and sure enough, a ways down, you do find a small... It, it would be, like, if, if Noak were to use this, it would just barely cover his fist. It'd be like a small buckler that would cover his fist, like a, for punching, essentially. Um, but it, you know, looks about the right size to be a workable shield for a pogo that won't, you know, kind of weigh him down too much and seems like it might be useful for him. Um, and then just slightly further down from that, you find a, a matching green... Uh, this is a little more hard. You know what a heater is? Do you know what a heater shaped shield is? No. Um, think like when you think of like Zelda or like a like a, a traditional video game style shield where it's uh, flat on the top and then it kind of comes down to like a teardrop kind of a shape. Think of like a teardrop basically where the top is flat. Actually, that's a heater. Um, no, I'll just look it up. Yeah, that's fine. Um, anyways, you find a, a green scale. It looks like it's made of one large scale of whatever creature this may have come from. Uh, that is a, is a match to the armor that you found. Okay, I'll grab that. Okay. So you then, lugging all this stuff, probably throwing it in the bag of holding over your shoulder just to, to carry it all, uh, have gathered all of that. Um, and we are back to Pogo. Right? I'll look to Pogo specifically to give him the... Egg. All right. And okay. I've finished my meal, and I'm going to go see if I can find armor and a shield. Okay. Oh! Hard to <laughs> How are you? I was about to go find some armor and a shield. I already got it for you. What? <laughs> <laughs> Such and, uh, surprise. So, I'm going to look at him and be like, well, That's this cool. is going to be perfect when we switch our bodies back. <laughs> this is but fantastic. That will happen by tomorrow. I mean, maybe, but if not, we at least have, have them for later. Oh. Yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna go hunting because it's normally what I do. And it's gonna okay. make me think Alright. And I'm going to I think I'm going to uh either I know they're nocturnal, so is everyone sleeping? They're they're split. Some of them are nocturnal and some aren't. It seems the majority are, uh, which is why when you guys approached previously there was a lot of noise at night because you guys came in relatively late. Um, oh, 
I mean, I'd at least show Pogo what I found for him to see if he likes it. So there's a small short sword, uh, the small shield, and chainmail armor. Okay. Very, very thin and light. Uh, seems like you'll be able to move around in it pretty easily. Uh, Ooh, this is awesome. It seems specifically fashioned to not impose disadvantage on on basically that it's it's uh, quiet and thin enough to not be noisy if you're trying to be. Oh, would you look at that? We didn't even have. You know what? Now I don't have to talk to the queen or whatever about trying to get anything. This is perfect, perfect, perfect. I love it. Green's my color. Matches my eyes. No, the green shield is not for him. It's mine. It's mine. Oh, the green shield's for you? Oh. <laughs> well, still, this is all great. I love it. Uh, um, then, uh, are all the wolves just, are, like, they, are they, are any of them eating? Yeah, what there's else? Natani, the one that had asked you to talk to, to find her, uh, well, the name she gave you anyways, she didn't specify whether that was a, uh, who that was to her, uh. Well, but she's uh, in the little mess hall area cooking. I'd like to uh, just not terribly loudly so I don't wake any of the other uh, woven creatures up. I'm going to start strumming on my banjo and I'd like to sing them a little song while everyone's doing their thing. Okay. So, uh... In touch with the ground I'm on the hunt I'm after you <laughs> Smell David. like I sound I'm lost in a crowd and I'm hungry like the wolf. <laughs> that is so stupid. So I sing them. I sing them a song. Of course, while they're eating, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Yep. And you, you mock these poor. I'm uh, not mocking them. This is Duran Duran. This is a jam, man. No, that's mocking. <laughs> there's, no, there's no good way. There was. There's no time People when people love ever songs about Duran. themselves. <laughs> uh. So, uh, you're telling with, me you uh, telling me the Queen of England doesn't love the song by Queen called Killer Queen? Nah, she fucking loves that shit. With a uh, laser beam, dynamite with a laser beam. Yeah, yeah. But, it's about her. <laughs> uh, all right, then Pogo doing that. What was Sarah moving off to do? I'm trying to find Nonway. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Uh, you uh, you check his his tent. Uh, he's not in there, but Launder is back, and he's kind of just sitting down waiting out there. Um, like he's kind of leaned against the wall. Uh, he says, are you you looking for... Yeah, I need to let him know that I've got something being delivered. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to be here, but if there's a giant bat, could you guys not attack it? That would be fantastic. So FedEx, UPS, all that thing? Yeah, that, yeah, that kind of thing. It's okay. being overnighted! <laughs> Like I said, I'm not exactly sure when it's going to come. I'm not even sure it's going to come before we leave. But if it does, I don't want you guys trying to eat the familiar. It comes well, from the land of Dramazon. <laughs> the Dramazonian bat. Uh, I, I think he's... I mean, he might be eating. He might be sleeping. I don't know. He's, he's back in the tower, but I'll let him know. That would be fantastic. Thank you. And sure. then I'm going to go find something to eat. Okay. Hey. Then you find Pogo singing an awful song, trying to serenade the, the uh, wolves in the little mess hall area. Uh, you do notice that as you're passing, you see uh, kind of open air tent. It's not my fault that Artemis' voice sounds like this. <laughs> this is, a, this is just that. what she sounds like. It's hard to hit pitch with her voice. It's yeah, Artemis' voice is fault. so awful that <laughs> you sound bad singing on this earth. That's good. Uh, you see Noark's back, though, is snoring in, in the tent area next to some wolves. Um, and uh, Artemis, you had finished the when you finished that you went to go eat. Is that what you said? Oh, hunting. Oh, hunting. I'm sorry. Uh, then, um, yeah. Then Sarah, you, you make your way into there uh, with Pogo singing. I'm just gonna ignore him and go get something to eat. Okay. Yeah, might as well. <laughs> well, you managed to they even with Artemis. <laughs> Uh, even with uh, the the penalty of Artemis' awful pitch, you still managed to pull off a decent song. Uh, with with Artemis not known to prone to singing and frolicking, apparently. Uh, Fox, give me uh, roll a d4 for me. Actually, sorry, a d8. Which one's that? Uh, it is third from the right. Um, That's ooh. a ten, dragon. Oh. 
you rolled an eight or you rolled a ten on a d8 somehow. oh <laughs> <laughs> one, right? uh, this is actually just for wind direction anyway um you as you set out the wind is, is blowing uh, from the south going straight north um you set your way out knowing that with that of course um i didn't put all of this stuff together for the, for the hunting i keep intending to and i haven't gotten to it yet uh but knowing the direction that the wind is blowing uh it is blowing out towards the bay basically out towards the way that you came from um you stalking through the the, the uh, kind of wet almost disease looking trees and plant bushes and so on um it's very difficult for you to find tracks because it seems as soon as something steps into this the, the underbrush kind of bounces right back to find tracks uh give me a survival check Uh, hang on. Let me sure. Okay. And I'm also going to be looking for herbs while I'm out there, too. Okay. Uh, then for that, give me an... Did I put herbalism on there or just alchemy? Uh, I did just not put herbalism. Yeah, then just use, uh, use nature. Okay. Um... In stalking through this, this this underbrush, trying to find some kind of a trail, something to follow, uh, it takes you some time. Um, there is a split toe, like a cloven hoof with a split toe. Um, it could be a few different animals that are natural to here, but it doesn't look quite right. Maybe this might be an animal might be slightly sickly. Um, but you, you spotted it in a few, pl- a few places where there was hard enough ground for it to leave a print. You're able to follow it enough. Uh, it is moving north is the direction that you're following, it, which means that the wind is to your back. Uh, blowing in the same direction of the animal, uh, which we, you would know, of course, it's not necessarily good, but the animal may turn. You don't know. Are you going to keep following that trail? Yep. All right. Uh, it's, it does curve off. It goes to the west slightly, uh, kind of west-northwest, um, and you following that through more brush, you're about probably five minutes away from the camp. Uh, you can still hear the ringing of hammers and all that, that, that sound, the, the din of the noise coming from the camp. Uh, by the, which you're, you're starting to get into the kind of area where you're starting to see occasional wildlife around. Um, being very careful where you step, of course, to not step into the, any of the explosive mushrooms, uh, but you are finding more and more of the uh, dangerous flora around here, including some plants that look to be moving a little unnaturally, uh, and trees and so on. Um, but you follow this, this path out a little ways further. Um, in so doing, you do come across uh, a, a, give me a uh, flat D20 roll. Okay. I gotta find my table for those here. Didn't I? I think I gave you the table for it, didn't I? Fox for finding herbs. Uh, not yet. You said you weren't done with. It. I thought I gave it to you. All right, let me find it. Uh, 12. Is that a d20? I think, I think so. it was a d. No, that was a d12, and you rolled, uh, you rolled max on a d12. Uh, far left. Oh. Roll it again this time. Far left. There you go. A seven. Okay, that is. Uh, you find a. Um, uh, you know what a pitcher plant is? Not off the top of my. Uh, it's like a plant that that has a big, like a looks like a pelican's gullet almost, like a big uh, a big cup almost, with a lid over the top of it, and and it's basically uh, water it will accumulate in there, but it it you know, gets sticky and all the kind of uh, rain and everything that gets collects in there gets kind of infused with whatever the plant stuff is. That's called a pitcher plant. Uh, but anyways, this the water that's inside of these things, especially in this area, you know, um, does have certain properties that can be extremely useful. Um, it is called luminous water. Okay. Uh, and that is what you, you kind of extract some of that and pour it into a vial and put it in your backpack. All right. Uh, it's, it's useful for a lot of uh, medicinal cures and so on. Um, and continuing along the, the trail then, uh, it does follow until it's turning straight west. Uh, you are getting close to where you think it might be, uh, so you need to kind of slow down and, and uh, be as sneaky as possible. Give me a stealth check. Okay. Uh, very quietly and carefully stepping through the underbrush without making noise, you come across 
uh, over some some dense underbrush and peeking your head just above it, you see what looks like an apex deer, uh, like a, a, a like an antelope almost uh, in the distance. They they are very tasty and there's usually a good amount of meat on them. Uh, it's the kind of deer you find in Hawaii, for example. Uh, but they're they're like thin, like almost like an antelope uh, with twisted horns. Um, but anyways, it it looks healthy enough maybe though the hoof prints didn't look good but this at least from a distance it looks like it's okay you you feel like you could probably get a shot off if you're going to try it but it's wide out in the open and if you miss your first shot you may only get a second and then it'll be too late uh, you won't be able to catch up with it so you're gonna take your shot yeah i'm gonna go okay. for a heart shot okay uh go ahead and roll an attack with your short bow the range on your short bow it is it's Okay, well, your first shot was within 80 feet, so that'll definitely hit. Uh, so that uh, the, the heart of the... Uh, yeah, I would say that with a 24, you'd still even hit your called shot, because that would be a minus 5, which would make it a 19, which is above its AC. So uh, the arrow sinks square into the spot you were aiming for, right between the, the shoulder blades, uh, and the, the creature just slumps to the ground in, in front of itself. Okay, I'm going to go uh, investigate it, I guess. See if it looks okay. Uh, give me a medicine check. Is that a toy, guys? Like a dog toy? Who's yeah, playing? Rufus is playing with squeaky ball. Gotcha. This is a weird squeak. Um, yeah, it, it actually looks fine. That the all four toes, uh, there's a, there's like a separate split in the middle of it. Uh, it's not designed for walking on this kind of underbrush, and it seems to be damaging its, its uh, hooves. You probably wouldn't want to eat the feet. But apart from that, it does look to be in, in normal, healthy order for, for a male buck. Just to make sure, I'm also going to put a cast protect on poison on it, and then bring it to the camp and skin okay. it. Then. then you lug it over your shoulder and start making your way back to camp, uh, being very careful, of course, for any uh, fungal growth that might be of the explosive variety. Uh, it does start to rain on your way back. Uh, kind of soaking this this creature on your shoulders and make it even heavier for you to lug it on your way. Uh, but you weren't super far out. You can make your way back to camp. Uh, what are and what was the kind of plant I found the luminous water in? A pitcher plant here. Yeah. Okay. That's a real plant. Um. So what are well, Norak is still sleeping. What are Sarah and Pogo doing? Um. If I got something to eat, then after that, I'm going to go back to the corner that was in before. Okay. And I'm going to check my arm and set up my tent and just try to be as far away from people as I can. So hopefully if Amazon shows up, nobody attacks him. Okay. Uh, checking your arm. Uh, let's see. How long has it been? You you casted that almost first thing this morning, right? Or was it right before going into the house? Uh, no, it was while we were still walking. Okay. So it was. Oh, that's right. Because you did it. Be, you did it when you were at the plants, I think. When you guys were afraid of the plants. Um, then it's been a little bit. It's it's probably grown maybe half an inch more since then. It's still that same black, but the shoulder, the the, the stump is continuing to grow down. It's grown maybe another half inch. And touching it just sends these like shocks of like electricity up your arm. Okay. And I forgot to say that I dropped it, so I'm still weird shadowy looking. <laughs> um, yeah, and that lasts like eight hours, right? Yep. Yeah, I should have I should have noticed that while you were talking with uh I guess you were mostly by yourself and just came in at the end, so uh they they've, you know, just kind of some distance then throughout all of this, but you haven't really spent too long communicating with them except for going into the, the room and getting odd looks when you were eating. All right, then I will drop it and try to get some rest, I guess. Okay. Then out in the corner by yourself, uh, trying to relax. Uh, is Norak still sleeping, Do You're trying to get a full long rest in? Ben? Are you getting a long rest? Yes. Okay. Uh, all right, then he's still continuing to sleep. Then what does Pogo up to? Oh. Uh. Pogo's probably going to maybe wander around for a minute and then uh, go find a nice, comfortable... Where's Norak at? He is sleeping next to a pair of... The, the two wolves that were attacking you were when you were on the board. I'll probably just go lay down. If I've got armor and I've got a shield, 
nice in my belly. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna go to Sarah, and I'm going to actually nope nope. I'm I'm going to uh, go lay down next to Norak. Let me uh, double check. You lay down next to Norak. If he rolls over, lay down. Norak. Well, not like right next to him, but in the general area, and just okay. look up at the sky and just think about the day and what's progressed. And I'm excited thinking about wearing my armor when I fully revert back to my form. So yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm pretty much done doing. Uh, it's late enough to where that's like a early dinner, and I'll just get ready, and or whenever sure. everyone else is ready to go to sleep. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll say that by now, since you guys have kind of just spent had a you know relaxing afternoon trying to recuperate from the, the rigors of the day. Um, you know, you, you you guys can all settle in to, to actually take your long rest whenever you're whenever you're ready to. Uh, it's probably seven thirty ish by the time Artemy comes back into camp. Uh, there is an immediate uh, uh, pause, of course, as every wargan went place kind of stops in the air and is staring straight at Artemis as she comes uh, 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 through the outer wall where an uh, uh, opening was open where you had uh, walked out from Artemis um, with this apex deer over your shoulder um, clearly drawing a lot of attention but you're basically approaching from the southwest uh, the region the, the area where the uh, uh, tree was that you had grown you're going to throw it down and skin it yeah okay give me another medicine check It. Um, you throw it off of your shoulder, uh, first cut off the feet, uh, you know, slice down the belly so you can pull the skin off and everything. But as you're going through this, uh, Launder approaches the same, the same Morgan that had offered to come with you. He says, uh, do you need some help with that there, miss? If you want. Just, just, not. Just, uh, just pose the feet properly, like burn them or something. Yeah, we've, um, a lot of the, the, Kind of creatures that we're used to having here are not adapting well to the new environment. So this this actually seems to be a pretty pretty prime example. It looked pretty healthy apart from the, the feet. Sure. Mm-hmm. So I'll get rid of these, and he, he picks up the, the two that you'd already cut off, and he tosses them to the to the wolves who start chewing on them. And he goes to, to helping you kind of uh, with the pulling the meats off to you know proper proper cuts and everything. Um, that'll take you a little while. Take you a good. You know, hour, hour and a half or so for that, so it's going to be early, you know, sun going down evening by then. Uh, oh, yeah, once I'm done cleaning it, I'll bring it to the kitchen and I'll keep the hide to be able to make something else later. Like, I'll treat the hide so I can okay. make it into, like, either like a small coat or something. Well, tanning takes time, and it's, like, it takes a lot of effort, too. That's not something you can really just, it's going to take you a few days to get it treated properly. Alright, so. okay, so I'll start the tanning process and just leave it on uh, okay. something in the camp. Um, you knew that they were they were tanning things here before, so you know they have the proper chemicals that you need for that. Tanning is just a specific process, it's not something you just do. Like you need proper chemicals, and you have to scrape it forever. It's a lot of hard work. Um, but uh, they, they've done tanning here before, so at least even if you just set it out, you know they'll know what you're trying to do, and maybe they'll be able to help you when you're gone or whatever. Uh, but you kind of begin the process of, of stretching it. So you put it up on a rack and, and uh, run the leather thongs through it to pull it tight and all that kind of stuff. You've probably seen you know a tanning rack before, what that looks like. Uh, but anyways, you, you kind of set it up so that it's at least prepared to, to kind of dry overnight uh, while, you, while you pulled everything out from it. Uh, Sarah, you watched most of this, of course, as Artemy was doing that nearby. You're in the southwest corner of the camp over by the tree uh, where Sarah or where Artemy was uh, uh, cleaning it. Uh, Norak and Pogo have gone to sleep. Uh, Sarah, it's probably by 9, 30, 10 o'clock. You, you've not seen a visitor just yet. Uh, but it's getting to the point where you guys would need to, if you're going to take a long rest, you would need to do that soon. Okay, while I'm waiting, I want to study the gate scroll as much as I can. Okay. Um, give me give me an arcana check with disadvantage. Ah. You realize why this is hard for you, right? Yes. Okay, because I'm, I'm making this extra hard for you on purpose. Because I mean, you, your 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 powers are innate; They're, they don't come from studying. You've never done this before, so anything of this sort has to be very di- like. If you were a wizard, that'd be different. The wizards are, are you're already used to this. You're kind of trying to book learn something that it, it'd be like never having read, uh, you know, an engineering manual or just you know, like just basic like elementary school type of learning, and then grabbing an engineering manual and trying to understand what it's talking about, like I an know. advanced. Type of thing. 
and I I plan on giving it to him if I keep failing at some point, but I'm not quite ready. <laughs> well, to... not, I don't mean just that, but I even mean the sigils that he's giving. He's he's an actual wizard. He he knows all these things. So you're trying to study from zero essentially, uh, which is why all this is, is harder for you. So, um, but while you're looking at it, though, so, the thirteen, it's not enough to get much from it really, but. Uh, you do notice that in two different spots, the sigils that he had given you where they are overlapping, uh, there are similar... Uh, the, the, in the picture that I, I... made that picture, by the way. I was pretty proud of myself. I, I didn't draw <laughs> That them. is pretty cool. Yeah, that I mean, I, awesome. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't draw the sigils. I literally took five sigils and then overlapped them in certain places and turned them and rotated them the way that I wanted and then kind of adjusted colors and things like that. Uh, but tried to make it you know, look like something that makes sense for what he's been trying to show you so that you'd at least have a visual representation of what I've been describing to you for, for the times you try to translate. Um, but the way that they kind of overlap in certain places, you're starting to recognize some of that in this scroll that you've been carrying around for a couple of months now. So this isn't, it, it, what he's showing you seems to have, uh, th you're starting to recognize some connective tissue, I guess, between what he's trying to teach you and what is in this scroll. Does that make sense? Yeah, they're not exactly the same, though, right? They're not the same sigils. They're not the same. None of the, none of the individual sigils are the same or anything of that sort. But the way that they connect and certain things that you do recognize, like words that you recognize, that this the moon, moon and eclipse and some of the things you figured out, you do see some of those in there. They're just not arranged in the same way. Um, it's more that the the way that this is drawn is not how you've seen arcane scrolls drawn anymore. Maybe this is a you know an older style or, or you know a difference in in language or dialect might be some something of that sort, but you're seeing a lot of similarities that you uh, were a little surprised by at first. Crap. All right. I'm going to pull out the other scroll and write back that I will be sending something with Kamazov that I am 100% positive he's going to want. I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to give it to him because I wasn't sure I trusted him, and I'm telling him all this. Okay. Uh, do me a favor, specifically word it out, so you don't have to do it now, just, uh, you know, yeah. sometime before next week. I'll write it. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's fine. Um, then are you going to sleep then? Uh, yeah. If he's not there okay. yet, I'll go to sleep. Okay. Uh, Artemis, you, it takes you some time. You're going to be the latest. You know, everybody else has gone to sleep, as far as you can tell. You see Sarah in the southwest. You see Pogo and Norok sleeping under, uh, under a tent area with a, a few of the wolves. Uh, you are the, the last one up of the group. Uh, Oluwen, by the way, you guys have not seen Oluwen for quite some time. So, you, you know, nobody's looked for her or anything of that sort. She, she walked out when everybody left uh, Nonway's tent four or five hours ago. Nobody's seen her since. I'm gonna go oh, no! Her and then go find <laughs> Did nobody realize that? Nobody, like, nobody noticed, apparently? Uh, you're going to go get something to eat, you said? I'm going to go get something, uh, uh, something to eat and then go find her and ask her if she would like some armor to you and then go dig through the pile of before I go sleep, because I only need a four-hour trance, so even if everybody else slept uh, earlier, it doesn't really matter. I'm normally the first awake anyway. Yeah. Yeah, with, with, with your... You don't need as much sleep either way. You do need to, you know, be tranced for that four hours, but uh, in the... Uh, when you step into the um, uh, mess hall kind of an area to go bring the, the chunks of food in, uh, uh, Londo had actually been passing a lot of it over for you already. But when you step in there, uh, Matani is not in there, although she had been previously. Um, well, who you find, uh, you haven't met her before, but it's another another of the uh, you know former elves, uh, uh, elven women, uh, who, who is cooking. She says, are you, uh, based on, on all that uh, uh, blood you've got over your shoulder there, I imagine that was you that brought that apex in? Yeah. Well, that'll, that'll feed us for a good day for, for the camp here. That is much, much appreciated. Uh, I, I mean, you certainly have earned the, by far, of course, the best cut since you were so willing to share it with us. You want me to prepare that for you? Uh, no thanks. Just keep it for later. She kind of smiles at you. Then what can I, uh, can I get you instead, then? Just whatever you already have ready. Well, we've, we've still got some mutton from this morning. Sure. She just nods. And she brings you a plate, so... Um, you... You finish your food, takes you, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour or so. Um, and again, you nobody's heard from Oluwen or anything, but uh, uh, nobody's seen Nanway either, by the way. Uh, you, you saw Launder, of course, as he was helping you, and he said that he might be in the tower, but that's it. Okay, I'm going to go look for Nanway and Oluwen, see if she okay. had anything to eat, and then 
find someone to sleep. Oh, ask her if she wants. Ask her if she wants armor. If she does, go find her some and then go sleep. Give me an investigation check. <laughs> of course. Uh, looking around, you you see hide nor hair of either Nonway or uh, Oluwen. Okay, I'm gonna go find her a piece of armor just in case, and then go find somewhere to sleep. Okay, uh, you knew you, there was another set that when you were digging through them, you just hadn't thought of it initially, but uh, so you knew exactly where to go. Uh, digging through the the box there. Uh, you do hear some stirring and, and a growl come from the, the first of the two that you tried to wake up earlier, uh, who is still snoring over there, still sleeping over there, rather. Um, although Norak is snoring, probably drowning some of that <laughs> noise out. But uh, anyways, you managed to, to pull it out without making too much noise, without disturbing them too much, uh, and stuff it in the, the bag of holding. Um, are you, where are you going to try to sleep? I'll probably go find where Sarah is and set up the tent. Okay. Uh, she is in the southwest of the camp, so you're not going to bring up the dome there? Well, not if everybody's sleeping somewhere else. I'm not going to go wake them up. Okay. All right. Then you make your way to the southwest of the camp uh, where you find Sarah. It is, at this point, after all you've done, time that it took to, to uh, clean the deer, uh, you know, cut all the, the, the chunks out of it and everything, uh, it's probably 11, 11, 11, 30 or so at this point. Uh, give me a perception check. Uh, with advantage in your elven perception. Hey, good roll, finally. Uh, <laughs> there, in the, the, the sky above, um, that the, the, the glimmering ring, remember, of the, the exploded moon. Everybody remember what I'm talking about? Yeah. So the, the, the ring that surrounds the planet of this, of the bits, of the broken bits of the moon... Uh, are shimmering and bright. There's, you know, the sun reflecting off of that is almost enough like moonlight, um, you know, like a solid moon, but it's just kind of spread out a bit more. Um, and you see a shadow pass in front of it that, that uh, kind of turns and looks like it's coming down this direction. It does resemble what you had seen previously coming down towards where Sarah is. Then as you watch, uh, the, the uh, wings flare out and a very large, uh, uh, somewhat kind of emaciated, looks looks thin, very thin. Uh, uh, bat, uh, ben, I'll be right back. He's got a lot of Discord. It just kicked him off. On his phone? Yeah. He said he'll be right back. Okay. Um, the wings flare out, and it kind of flaps itself in place as it kind of hover up, staring at you. Because uh, you, you you know approaching Sarah there, it's, just, it's looking at you as if it's not sure of your intent. Uh, but it's trying to kind of settle down near Sarah. Box. Uh, I'm just gonna gently. He has something in his hand. Or, it's sorry, it tied up. To... Oh, oh well, yeah, with the bat, the bat we met the other time. Okay, yeah. uh, I'm gently gonna try to wake Sarah because the bat is probably trying to wake her. Okay. Um, as you approach, he kind of hisses in your direction a little bit and kind of backs himself away. He's still, he's still flapping his wings, trying to hold himself in place, which is difficult for a bat. So he's kind of backed himself. He's actually almost outside the wall now, uh, just just backing away from her, allowing you to approach. So, uh, Sarah, you feel uh, Artemy kind of shaking you awake and hear the beating of wings nearby? I would gently hold out my hand and arm just until he'll land on it. But it's his... uh, give me an animal handling check. <laughs> hey, okay. that's uh, he uh, flaps his way over uh, and kind of if, it looks like he's about to set down on your on your arm uh, and then he something catches his eye on the ground and he kind of kind of flaps like it's hard actually his wings till he till he pushes uh, uh, you know quickly down to the floor uh, and then and then kind of brings himself up and then starts waddling towards the kind of awkward gait of a of a walking bat towards Sai like he's trying to reach towards Sai with its with his you know claws that are part of his wings. And waddling towards Sai like he's trying to, to catch up with her. I'm gonna. I've woken up at this point, right? Yeah, Artemy woke you up. All right, then I'm just you, gonna. You, you he's a very large bat trying to chase Sai around this yard. Uh, Cam is off. Come over here, buddy. Uh, I'll give you some food, and I'll take out a ration. I uh, sniffs the air and kind of flaps himself up, and then and then sets down right next to you on the on the board. 
and I'll uh, I'll feed it to him and then grab whatever's in this pack. Yeah. He gobbles it up hungrily. Uh, the case on his back um, is kind of backpack-like, essentially. Uh, and there are two very heavy, uh, large books. In fact, they are they're they would be large for humans. So for for a halfling, like they're even carrying one of these is going to be difficult for you. But there are two in there. I'll grab the second one and put it in the bag of holding for now. We could trade them out whenever you want, and I'll gently pet the bat. That sounds great. I'm going to actually hand you the other one as well. Because uh, the bag of holding is waterproof, correct? It's, it's a void. There's no air, no water. Awesome. <laughs> I'm going to hand you the other one just to keep it safe, because I'm going to be in a lot of trouble if this gets ruined. Okay. You could just grab them whenever you want. <laughs> that sounds fantastic. And then I'm going to take the gate scroll out of the the scroll case. Okay. Because I want to make sure that the telescription scroll stays good. Mm-hmm. And just put the scroll in his bag and give him okay. another little bit of ration and pet him a little bit and tell him he can have that. Give me a sleight of hand check. Okay. <laughs> that's that's barely he was going to be 16 where you touched it um, you feel because you know you're, you're having to carefully handle this with just one hand because uh, you're not in shadow form uh, you've pulled out the, the scroll and it feels very crumbly and you feel like if you had given it even a slightly more vigorous uh, uh, pulling out it would tear and maybe crumble in places So you very carefully pull that out, try to you know roll it back up as safely as you can, and put it in the in the pack on Camazon's pack. Do I feel like if leaving it in his pack would? Make you don't it feel fine. great about that. Yeah. Okay. All right. It might make it fine, but it might you know you feel like at the edges, places where it's making contact with the inside of the backpack is not super smooth. It's like a scroll case is smooth on the inside. This backpack is essentially like a like a burlap cloth almost, and it's a little bit rough. And while he's beating his wings, it might get smushed and might get kind of banged around a little bit. Okay. Well, then, when I tried to pick it up, noticing that, I would have left it in the scroll case and taken out the telescription scroll. Okay. And then, are you putting the entire scroll case in his pack then? Yep. Okay. All right. Then you have pulled it out. You have the scroll of telescription. Uh, you have... What do you have that you can put it in? Put the scroll of telescription in so that that doesn't get damaged. I'm going to hand it to Artemis and just let. Uh, I'm gonna need to take this out at least once or twice a day, but will you hold on to this for me? Sure. Thank you. Okay. All right. Then uh, you hand those off to Artemis then for the bag of holding. Uh, Kamazov is very hungrily eating at the uh, uh, the ration that you had given him, and as soon as he finishes it, he spins back around and just like a like a dog chasing a squirrel hops back down to the ground and is chasing Sai around again. Nope, nope, don't eat her. You can't eat the fox. He kind of stops and looks up at you like puzzled, like he's confused. He doesn't understand what you're saying. She's it doesn't necessarily, food. like you don't necessarily know if he's trying to eat the fox, but definitely <laughs> he's trying to, to catch it. <laughs> like, Artemis, give me give me an animal handling check, Artemis, to recognize uh, what its intent might be, if you can recognize that. Yeah, you're not sure. He might want to eat some. <laughs> you don't know. Bats don't normally eat. Some bats are carnivorous, yeah. That is true. They definitely eat bugs. I mean, that counts as carnivorous for sure. But some are, you know, some are plants like fruit bats and stuff like that. But uh, but you don't, I mean, you don't know. He's, he may, it may be, it may not be. He's just definitely trying to chase Sai. Sai does not to be scared at all. Bats. Yeah, Sai does not appear to be scared. She's she's running in circles like she's playing. Yeah. It should be fine, then. Okay. If he yeah, tries he just, to take a bite, she'll just bite him right back. And tell no, she's him not, stop. He's, not, he's not flying at her. Like, he's yeah. waddling. You know, the, well, the, the bat wings are connected to the arms and the feet on each side, right? So he has to waddle very awkwardly. And he's much faster than him. He doesn't really have much of a chance of catching her, but he seems to be having fun just chasing her anyways. Okay. And it's not making too much noise, so... He just seems to be enjoying himself doing that. But uh, the, the the night is pretty quiet. Uh, you, Of course, the, a lot of the Worgen are waking up. In fact, the two that were in by Norok have now gotten up. Uh, and they, they you know, looking around, they see that the group is 
uh, you know, trying to sleep, so they don't appear to be making much noise, or they don't. Or maybe they're intentionally or unintentionally. You don't know, but they don't. They're not trying to make too much noise as, um, as they go about whatever work they need to. Although the noise from the from the camp to the northwest is still quite loud, especially because it started raining a little bit, um, which is carrying some of the some of the noise. What are you guys doing? Are they still sleeping? Uh, no, po- no, no. Go and Porok are still sleeping. <laughs> yes. I've done that so many times. Uh, Pogo and Noark are still sleeping. Yeah. It's not a heavy rain. It's like a like a, like a thin mist almost. Oh, well, maybe uh, you guys are under, under tents anyway. Yeah, probably. Uh, or I'm hoping they would have grabbed the tents out of the bed. Or asked for well, the they tent. were sleeping. Um, so Pogo specifically, uh, or Justin had said that he was trying to watch the sky. But yeah. the tents in that area are, are not, they're not tents as much as they're like a canopy that gets thrown between uh, two, okay. two posts. So he just found a spot, but I mean, yeah. you can just roll over. If I get it. uncomfortable. Yeah, because I still have the tents I made in the bag to holding, and nobody asked for their tents for the night. So. I, yeah, well, I feel like there's, there's, there's rooms with ceilings and stuff here. I think we're Yeah, right. well, most of it most of it's ruined, but there are canopies that are pulled yeah. over, you know, the, the roofs and areas. And, and the spot where Norok was sleeping is fully covered, and you just said that you were, you know, trying to watch the sky, so you were in a spot where you could just roll over, you know, three feet left and be under a cover. Oh, sorry, I said I was setting up a tent. I thought I had mine. Oh. Uh, well, they were all in the bag of holding, unless you were carrying yours separately, but they're kind of big. Okay. They're well definitely listed in the bag of holding, so... Once I'm awake, I will set up my tent, then. <laughs> okay. Then, uh, well, Artemis is there with you anyway, so you guys all set up your tent to take your long rest. Anybody doing anything else, then, or just going to sleep through the... Just, or try to get your, your rest into the night? He's going to try and rest from there. I yeah. will watch Kamaz off until he leaves, and then rest. Uh, well, so actually... Make sure he doesn't get eaten. Okay. Well, after he's... Nobody... The, the, the well, Morgan don't appear to be giving him any mind at all. They Like, this is... You were walking around like a fucking shadowy demon, and they didn't care that much. They're not going <laughs> to care that much about a giant rat that is chasing a fox around camp, you know what I mean? Uh, this, this is lesser weird than that was. Uh... But the um, uh, he does chase Thai for, for a good five minutes or so until he seems to maybe be tired. Uh, you don't know, but he does stop and he kind of flaps back up to you and just sits like next or stands next to you there, kind of staring at you intently. Um, I'm not sure how many more rations I have left, but I'll feed him some more of what I have and just put him on the head and then tell him thank you and that what I put in his bag is really important. So be super careful and take it straight back to Corn's End. Okay. Uh, the the second ration that you put down for him, uh, where did you eat all of yours? I don't see them listed anymore. I'm not sure that I ever had rations put on here, but I don't think I've eaten any because Artemis has been cooking. Yeah, that's true. Uh, well, you normally, I think you had 10 originally. I just don't see them in there anymore. They were definitely in there before, but that's fine. Uh, especially where you guys are. It's not like you guys are out in the woods. Anyway, you know, there's food here in camp, so you, you can, you know, have gotten something to, to feed him. Um, so he, he just kind of garbles that up as, as, as much as he, quickly as he can. Um, he doesn't, you know, respond. It's not like he can really uh, nod or anything like that. He can't communicate back to you necessarily. Uh, but he does seem to, at least on some level, understand uh, that he's got impo- impo- important, valuable goods, which, you know, what was brought to you was similarly important, so that's probably been impressed upon him by Corin's Antilus anyway. Uh, and then, you know, five minutes after he finishes eating, he kind of has, has uh, had his spill, and he kind of flaps his wings and gets up high up into the air uh, until he's up far enough that he feels safe and then way back to the northwest. All right, so I'm headed to bed. Okay. And everybody's settling in for a long rest. You can apply that. There we go. Stop that one. All right. Uh, morning comes. Uh, uneventful night. Uh, no arrows plinking against the dome like you'd had last night. Uh, you have at least gathered some amount of, of uh, freedom on their part. Uh, Pogo, you wake up needing to pee first thing in the morning and then realize that you are back in Pogo shape again. Yes! All right! Hey, hey, hey! I've got my dick back! Everyone! <laughs> That's, that's, that's what I was saying, but I didn't want to say that specifically. I was I was basically trying to point Look out. Look what I just did to the tree <laughs> on my own. <laughs> Without the aid of, of you know of, of mechanical device. I think wrong. according to the laws of this area, that tree is now mine. 
<laughs> it is a beast cave, right? Uh, Artemy, you are back in your your natural elven form finally after oh! three or four days of uh, awkward uh, situations created by switching bodies. You are no longer uh, Freaky Friday. You're back to normal. Oh, <laughs> man! Not to worry, Artemy, but um, I was a little itchy down there, so I don't know <laughs> oh, if that's something you might get a salve for or something. So, <laughs> uh, you are back in your shapes, although I don't know why you were so concerned about that. Clearly, the, the uh, uh, army of snails that would have eventually just drowned you in your sleep, that was a bigger worry. That was, that was a concern, right? Uh, no, my bigger concern was my body back. <laughs> well, you didn't have snails. I had all the snails on me. You just yeah, That was definitely probably the worst for you. I mean, I didn't mind it. It was nice. Apparently... <laughs> Uh, when you don't have to stare at people's asses all day long, it's it's much more enjoyable when you're on walks. <laughs> Is nobody well, sad that we that we don't have to hear uh, uh, Mrs. Doubtfire voice anymore? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> fair, very right. fair. I would totally um, just hunt Siren Hill because yay, I'm back. Uh, uh, this is exciting. Okay. Big news. Uh, <laughs> Uh, looking around, you know, kind of being happy that, that once you've woken from your trance that you are yourself again, finally. Uh, you, you kind of open your eyes, like you, you just felt that. You just knew that, of course, internally that you were in your own form again uh, after you came back from the dream. Uh, and when you open your eyes and look up, uh, floating there in front of you about four feet off of the ground is Olawin. She looks like her eyes are closed and her head is down like she might be sleeping in place, but she's just floating there like a pillar standing in about, about ten feet away from you, there. All right, someone toss a rope around her. We'll just t- take her with us. <laughs> well, you aren't there. You and, Nor- you and Norak are in the uh, in the tent oh. further. Away. That's super creepy. She kind of her, her. She kind of shakes her head a little bit, like she's woken up by you saying that. Uh, looks at you. She says, "Oh, sorry. I, I I just got bored waiting for you all." No, no, it's fine. It's just a little creepy having somebody float above you while you're sleeping. Can you? Can, oh, that's right. I'm not there. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go wake Norak up and 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 uh, tell him uh, go find everyone else. So I'm gonna I'm gonna super happily and excitedly go go find Artemis. <laughs> now uh, that you're, you're Pogo again, yeah. stoked. Is, is an extra skip in, in Pogo step. Yep. I'm like jogging. I'm I'm like <laughs> I'm doing that Hobbit run from Lord of the Rings where their legs are all like and they're all side. In here, yeah. Super exciting. All right, Norak, you are awoken by a very happy Pogo that doesn't look like Artemis anymore. I'm like just, jumping on him like a husky on a bed. Be like, look, I got my body back. Look what's happening. Oh, it's great. It's great. It's my tree, by the way. Over there. It's mine. I'm going to go find another people. <laughs> what you doing, G? I'll go. Meet up with everybody. Okay. Uh, making your way out into the to the camp, it is about 7.30, 8 a.m., you'd guess, uh, and most of the Oregon are out. Uh, it seems like the, you know, the nocturnal ones are still up, and then the ones that have been kind of awake during the day, everybody's, everybody seems to be awake, so it's pretty busy uh, all of a sudden in camp. Um, the smell of, of, well, Norak would definitely recognize venison, um, and Artebe would recognize it. The both of you would recognize that uh, very good smelling venison is being cooked. Um, of course, Artebe, you know it's what you brought in, um, but uh, that's coming from the, slightly off to the east of where Norak and Pogo just came out of. Uh, but no, Norak and Pogo, when you guys come out, you do see off of the ground, kind of looks like she's talking with Sarah and Artemy in the southwest part of the camp. Whoa. That's a neat trick. Is that new? She looks over her shoulder as you guys approach. She says, uh, I mean, new enough, yeah. It, this is all a little strange to me, too. I was just apparently scaring your, your friends the, unintentionally. How How high can you go? I haven't really tried. Try. It's nice. It's, it's nice that you now look like you smell. Oh, this is so much better. How do I look? Do, I, do, you, do you like what you see, flying girl? Yeah, I'm going to do that. <laughs> she, she does giggle a little bit, actually. This is good. This feels, this feels right. It just feels right. Well, I'm, I'm going to excitedly put on that armor, too. <laughs> All right. Oh, it fits! Look how good I look, guys! Yep, it's a, a chain shirt. You pull it up over your head. It's almost like uh, similar in weight to maybe like football pads. Did you ever? Did you play football, Justin? I did. 
all right, so football pads, like think of that. Like it's it's got some weight to it, sure, but it's not, you know, it's not um, obstructing as far as like you can still pretty much move at the same, uh, you know, rate you otherwise would. It doesn't really weigh you down. Uh, but you pull the shirt up over your head. Uh, the sleeves are a little bit long for you. Like they come down past the elbow just a tiny bit. So that might get a little bit annoying. But apart from that, it's about as perfect as you could possibly ask for when it you know, wasn't perfect. Specifically. I'm also going to give you a small short sword and a small short Yes, I am Pogo. Fear me. <laughs> yeah. a, a little like a like an emaciated dwarf almost <laughs> in, in the awesome. armor and shield and a, and a very thin and, and uh, smooth, like very uh, uh, finesse style short sword. Uh, this basically gives me. I've have. I'm basically wearing all elven armor right now. Yeah. I've got yeah. elven boots elven and shoes too. Yeah, elven. Yeah, everything's elven. I also grabbed um, three extra short swords from the pile and four daggers if you need them. Okay. You just put those in the bag? Yeah, they're inside the holding. Okay. I should add them to the bag, actually. Yeah. Uh, while they're doing this, I'm going to ask, hmm? ask Artemis for my scroll back and see if there's a response, and you can send it to me later. I sent, I sent you sure. what I wrote to him. Okay. Then Oluwen, uh looking around, you know, while Pogo is uh, redressing himself in, in armor, says, "Well, um, I, I don't want mean to be uh, a thorn in anyone's side, but um, I do have uh, a need to." to oh, now to we're gonna go fucking wreck these guys now. I've got my body back. I've got some armor. Norox the size of a bloody barn. That's which, by the way, way, with her floating four feet off the ground, she's like. She's still slightly taller than Norok, but not by a whole lot. Like she's almost just she's a little bit above a Norok eye level. Right. Well, as long as she can control it, we'll be all right. By the time we get there, she's eighteen feet off the ground and can't come down. <laughs> no, she she brings herself down. She was only up above because Sarah and May were up above. They were they were laying on a on that same kind of board that you were on that was you know, up off the ground. They were laying on that, so she was just up above, you know, waiting for them essentially. She I'll also give the armor to Alwyn for perfect. She looks at it, she says, oh, I'm not even sure. I mean, I guess it wouldn't hurt. I'll go ahead and throw it on. And she, okay. she takes it from you and pulls it up over her head. It's a little bit too long for her. She's she's almost kind of similarly emaciated. Like, she obviously wasn't fed when she was, uh, you know, in the, uh, in the cellar down there. Or in the cave, rather. Um, so she's not super... Um, doesn't fill that out anymore, really. But uh, but it does, you know, does fit her enough that she can throw it over her shoulder. He just doesn't seem concerned with it, really. All right, let's go find that big werewolf and let's be on our way, guys. Uh, you hear a, a, a kind of a barking sound almost from behind you. He says, I'm, I'm right here. I've been ready. Oh, all gee, how did you sneak up on me? Oh, wow. He stands himself up. He was he was kind of laying in the same, or, uh, sitting against the back again. By the him. way, uh, I'm me, not her, now me, but not her, right? Oh, wait. Yeah. You're, you're not. No, oh, I was her yesterday. It was these fucking fairies. Pixie. It was pixies. Pixies. These pixies, fairies, pixies. 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 pixies fairies. Did you get any we name? Anyways, mm. magic. Our bodies were switched, and I'm back, baby. I'm back. He's he's kind of grinning. Uh, he he asks that, that you get any names. names. Did you get the names of these pixies? It oh, did we? I we did. I don't remember. Well, it was one pixie who had stories about some other pixies and some corgis. Does that help? He chuckles. He says, he says you mean the queen's corgis. The queen's corgis, yeah, yeah. yeah that was... Uh... Oh, Sparkle Sand. The pixie's name was Sparkle Sand. He kind of, he, he, he like guffaws and leans over and kind of smacks his big old claws against his knees. He says, that bitch? You found that bitch? Yeah. Sadly. She was gorgeous, by the way. I'm Ugh. just gonna smack him on the head and say, uh, "Yeah, no." We're gonna look her up when we get back to normality. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're not so busy. <laughs> we're gonna look her up and and see what she's up to. No, I wouldn't he recommend says, that. He says, "Uh, uh, you, you might want to be careful about that." There, Pixie's glamour is well known for uh, affecting, let's say, our side of of the gender line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's how we got stuck playing a game. 
Yeah, well, I mean, in really our defense, have... we did pretty good on the game, so... <laughs> She's, to be honest, she's harm less harmful than most, rather. She's not exactly harmless, but uh, I I've fallen afoul of her, her wiles more than once. Oh, really? What a small world. Yeah, she's, she's been around here for a few years now, so, I mean, anybody that goes out in the woods for too long, you end up coming across her at some point. And oh. she, tends to, she tends to play fun and, and relatively uh, innocuous games with, with men folk, but yeah, the, the the girls. If you get too close, sometimes she'll she'll be a little more aggressive with that. So you might want to be careful if you come into her again. Mm-hmm. We're gonna try and avoid her as much as possible. That's well, probably. Uh, I mean, I don't if know if we one day, it can be fun. Maybe maybe one day we'll find a way to trap her, and then we can we can make her play a game, and then if she doesn't, we can make her have snails on her. Ah. Nails? No, I'm just I'm very excited. I'm very excited right now. We're about to go uh, well, save this whole island. That explains a, a lot of that confusion. I, I was didn't quite understand why you you were smelling like you and, and vice versa. You didn't, you didn't uh, well, like I one. did kind of say we were struck by pixie magic. Oh, uh, maybe I wasn't here. I, I wasn't here when you first arrived. So, right. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, we can't just assume everyone knows everything about us. You hear uh, Olo in, interrupt. She says, <clears throat> uh, I don't mean to be a stickler, but... Um, no, let's get going. Let's go. Let's do it. Launder just nods. He says, I'm, I'm ready. He stands up or, or, you know, stands up the rest of the way, grabs the bag that he had on the ground, throws it over his shoulder. Uh, Olo, uh, you can tell the other uh, elves that are out there that we're heading back towards the... Uh, what do you call that? A house? Your house? That we're heading back to your house. Mind. They, they left when we spoke yesterday. Ugh. All right. Well, we'll see what we find. I'll tell you if I if I hear them. If I if I can sense that they're nearby, I'll let you know. But as far as I know, they went out there already. All right. Well, no time no time to waste. She just nods and starts floating. She's not waiting for you guys. She starts floating out towards the east side of the camp, towards the towards the, the path. That's that neat. Leaves. That is a neat trick. <laughs> She kind of giggles a little bit. He seems to be maybe maybe Pogo's uh, happiness at having his body back is, is somewhat infectious. Maybe she's just as happy to be you know about gathering some sort of revenge for. Her. Uh, but she does seem to be in a good mood, she's happy. You know, you guys have never seen this on her before, of course. Granted, you've only known her for you know less than twenty-four hours at this point. Before we leave, do any of you guys have any extra blood? Wait, what? Like a pint of blood that we can. Uh, all the wind slows, she slows and then stops and then turns. She's still floating. Turns, looks over her shoulder. That is a very odd question, little halfway. Yeah, you know, ah, don't worry about it. Never mind. It doesn't doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. But if we come across some blood, just let me know. Just let me know. What well, might you need blood for? I. It, it, it's, it's it's personal. <laughs> I'm just going to look at him and be like, well, since I seem to bleed a lot, if I start bleeding, you can have some, okay? That's a great deal. Yeah, I'll, well, or if we kill something, you know, it doesn't have to be uh, human blood. It's just blood, so. Is, so is this question asking Justin, uh, this is Jeremy acting that Justin, not yeah. the DM for Pogo. Are you asking for the needles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's for the needles. Okay. okay, so that needs to be fresh. You realize that, right? Yeah, but like, so like, like, uh, like how fresh is fresh? Um, Probably, maybe with I'll say within an hour. Like it needs okay. to have been drawn within an hour. But like, if we kill uh, something, I could take a take a cup of blood. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah Do I have, have to poke them with the needle? No, and then no. I just I just need blood. Yeah, it just needs blood. You haven't oh. seen how it works yet. That's just what uh, Sarah was able to determine from uh, yeah. identifying. Okay, them. and Sarah told us this. Yeah, she gave me we the. Told she, I would have told me. Yeah. Okay. But you did need to attune those, by the way, that and the pearl. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yes, I would have attuned the pearl. During oh, the I forgot. Attunement. Does okay. attunement something you actually have to do? It doesn't just happen, right? Correct. Yeah, you have to do it. Not, but, but, I mean, you had time during the long rest, so, I mean, it's fine if you... You guys haven't even left camp yet, so if you yeah. guys you know, say that you did attune it during the long rest, that's fine. Yeah, then I would have done that after she right. gave it to me. Uh, but for Pogo, you already had three things tuned. You can only have three. Oh, interesting. You to give up. I, you, I mean, you don't... I'll you think about it as, as somebody else, but yeah. 
Uh, yeah. You have the gem, the hat of disguise, the gem of seeing the hat of disguise, and the lithic of life thieving. You have the. I do. So just keep that in mind. So you know, decide. I guess before we get to anything serious. So I so don't you... want to touch those needles. Okay. So uh, does uh, you know? I, I'm kind of I'm using a few magical items right now, um, and I, I really don't think these needles are going to work with the other. Who who, would, who wants to use these needles? And then I'll tell them what they. I'll tell the party what they do. Okay. With that. You can I make your own little briarling, and they can walk around with you, be a little friend. Uh, Sarah. You know what? Actually, if no one, if, if no one wants them, I'll still use it. If if no one else wants it, I'm just gonna take off my hat of disguise, put it carefully in my pack, and I'll I'll use the needles. Turn the needles instead. Okay. Yeah, Sarah has the Rod of Absorption, the Ring of Healing Surges, and the Pearl of Power. Uh, Artemis doesn't want it. Fogo, you had three. And then Norok, I think you just had Vulcan and your Shield G. Oh, and the Ring of Evasion, right? Yeah. Uh, Man, Vulcan. look at us just overloaded with magical shit. Good uh, job, actually, guys. The, your, uh, your Ring of Evasion and your and Vulcan require attunement, but the, the Sentinel Buckler does not, and the Stick of Stars doesn't. So you could have, your, you have an open attunement essentially if you wanted to use the needle otherwise uh or you know the hat if Pogo wants to give up the hat or whatever but some of you guys what you want to do there oh i just have the cloak of elven kind yeah but you said you didn't want the noodle the needle oh the no the needles definitely now i'm not touching those those are made of coral i'm not going to that place again. twice yep. is enough thank you very much does anyone want them i go in once go in twice <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll for for the time being, I'll put the hat of disguise in my pack, and okay. I will grab okay. these needles and put them nicely close to my side so I can use them when I feel like it. All right. And by the way, I gave the scroll back to Artemis to put into the bag of holding. Okay. After I was done with it. All right, Justin. I put that in your uh, in your inventory. I didn't put the item information. I will, I will later. Uh, and I unattuned the Hat of Disguise for you. Cool. Yep. All right. Then uh, you guys, with all of that taken care of, make your way out, uh, heading back towards the um, uh, towards the, the house. Uh, Olowen kind of floating in the lead. Uh, anybody doing anything for the walk? Any discussion? I would, I would just be looking to make sure that there is um, nobody's going to step on expulsion much. Yeah, Most of it's road. Okay, uh, it's yeah. all it's all pretty much road, anyways. And you guys did walk this past twice already, path twice already, so you kind of know the, the direction there. Um, you make your way without issue. Uh, there are two different times where Olawin stops, and she kind of makes a gesture towards towards you guys to, to kind of hold you in place, just kind of holding a hand up because she's floating in front of everybody, uh, and she's like listening intently. Uh, and then she looks off in the distance, and she kind of flicks her hand in a certain in a certain direction, off and, and like once to the to the to the west, and then the other time towards kind of northwest. Um, and then there's she's just silent for a moment, and then sets her hand down and just continues floating. Uh, anything you hear from the elves? So we're walking all the way. No, nothing yet. All right. She still seems more cheerful. All right, all right. Um, so. I'm still keeping an to, eye on here while we walk. Okay. You seem to know uh, kind of a uh, decent amount about these creatures. Anything you can tell us that might help us kill them easier or better or faster? You know, a good spike through the skull does the trick. Good to know. Good to know. If and their you, skull isn't in the normal spot, you think, right? Like in the head oh, yeah. area? Okay. Behind all, the, behind all these things, and she holds her hand out in front of her jaw and kind of dangles it down. All right. They look like if bottle. You, oh, uh, bottle. Bottle was still at the very early part of, of his theramorphosis. Theramorphosis? Yeah, theramorphosis. Uh, she's actually not quite as far along even as he is, but uh, you guys... Shit, you never did see a fall on Alyssa, did you? No, you guys haven't, except for the drawing. Do you remember the drawing the bottle gave you? Yeah, would the the thing that happened in the previous campaign, would we yep. know what the Alyssa looked like then? Yep, exactly. So, you guys as players, do you guys know what they look like? Yeah, kind of like a, a Not really. weird um, 
what's the word like uh like the captain from the second uh yeah Ocean that's the Caribbean what that was movie. a copy of yeah that's exactly what yeah. that was a copy of the, so they, what is, the fuck is that like a person mixed with a squid face yeah little squid things coming out as a beard yeah if you google mind flayer that's what they look like oh okay yeah there you go yeah and well except or, for because of uh Davy Jones, uh, that's who he is in the movie. Davy yeah, Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Here, I'll find the I'll find the, one of the images to show you guys. The one who's uh, missing a heart. Can't walk on I don't remember those movies very much. I actually I really I've got them. Disney Plus now, so I've watched everything. I got it I've free because of the Plus. there was a Hulu bundle, the Hulu with uh, no commercials, because I refused to watch anything with the commercials in it. Um, so I got that bundle and it comes with Disney Plus. But there's fucking nothing on there. Literally like nothing that was of interest to me at all. Oh, Disney Plus. I don't like Disney. I, I, I don't like Disney in general, so that's no surprise, I guess. But like, I was, I expected there to be something cool on there. I don't like Star Wars. I don't like Disney. The Marvel movies that I liked, I've already seen. That's a mind player there, eating a person. That's that right. is creepy. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't seen one before. Smooth like a dolphin. Uh, here, here's some floaty ones. Which is what she's doing, by the way. She is floating just like that. So yeah. <laughs> I might give you an idea of what's going on. They That's what like, she's turning into. They look like, That's what Bottle is turning into. They look like a cross between like humanoid and and octopus. Yeah, it literally uh, just yeah. looks like an octopus that has a body. Yeah, if like you just a, cut the body off. If it you just put an like octopus a... on top of a human head, that's kind of how it would look. Now oh, that, by the way, that is, is some crazy parties. By the way, let me tell you, <laughs> the Japanese probably do that on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. um, the I like my sushi raw. <laughs> uh, those leeches, remember the leech things that you guys found in the ship? Remember, yep. dicks and the faces. The I did not like them. Yeah. The drill, the, the 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 that's what ate through Oluwen's ear. It's also what ate through the heads that were nailed to the wall in the ship. You remember that, where there were five heads that were nailed to the wall. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the eater had been eaten through those leeches eat through the ear and then uh, nest in the brain and then when they when they patch uh, this is what they turn into if they, they're if basically they, larvae they're, they are larvae exactly and that is that, that larva is what becomes the creature the, the, the thing that existed previously it's like a parasite that takes over a host and turns into this creature instead um, so the, the, the parasite is what becomes the humanoid the previous existence is no longer there Meaning that for Oluwen, for example, since it already ate through her ear and is, she's mid so mid theramorphosis, uh, yeah, theramorphosis. Uh, when that transition completes, she won't be herself anymore. She'll just be one of them. She, Oluwen will no longer exist. Was, uh, but the leech that was put in her is what she would be from then on. That she's just the no longer larval form of it. So, so the way I see it is, we're just going, and we need. There's probably like some giant thing that's like a queen, and these other little things are just falling out its ass. Uh, when you say that out loud, she says, uh, "You're not too far off. Uh, in the in the the caves there, there will be a pool of some kind, and there will be many more in there of this thing that's in my head right now." All right, so we need earplugs. <laughs> I'm afraid that may not be enough to protect you. Your size, your head might just explode. The, the creatures oh, that, that they're created the by these, when the, they, they, they transition from uh, our normal form, let's say, you know, what you are now to what you become is, is different from different species. But at least for, for elves and uh, for, for humans, uh, a few others, they, they turn into the, these creatures that you saw in, in, the, in the journal and uh, the information we learned when the vast erudition broadcast out to everyone. That's what, what they look like, but some species turn into different. I'm gonna, things. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my hat back on, but not attuned to it, and I'm just gonna pull it <laughs> tight over my ears, all the way down, just like cover them as much as I can. I'm like, oh. So are you gonna assume then that this this hat is the like uh, Fargo style with the like ear flap? I'm just, I'm hoping. Yeah. No, 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 no. Like, I, I picture it kind of like a a small, almost small pointed hat almost like a small version of like a witch's hat with a smaller brim and then i'm just gonna pull it down as as much as i can <laughs> over my ears okay pull it written down then um yep. but she still seems like jovial she seems like very especially for something that you're discussing which is pretty creepy and she's like almost grinning yeah uh, she's kind of floating along towards the towards the house uh but i'm gonna ask her- good 
do you think if I electrocute the water that they're in, would it kill them? She kind of t- she she doesn't stop or slow, but she kind of tilts her head to the side. You're still just looking at her head. Um, tilts her head to the side a little bit, like she's, just like she's pondering. She says, "You know, I'm not sure. It, it might I, I, the the pool that they're in usually is." Not very big, and, and with you know a decent amount of electricity, that might be enough. But it's usually protected. They put locks on, on you know, covering the pool, and then uh, how, the, how you get in, I'm re- really not sure myself. But if we can manage to open the thing and destroy all the, the leeches in there, that would keep them from at least being able to make any more, even if we have trouble killing the warrior. Okay. Hey, Olawen, oh. you're you're feeling pretty good today. You're definitely still hundred percent. Ready to go take revenge for your family, right? And I'd like to roll an insight check that she uh, responds. Sure. Uh, she she kind of looks over her shoulder at you and she winks uh, and, and is very much grinning. She says, oh, I'm, I'm more than 100%. I feel better than I have oh, since before all of this in the first place. Right. Um, hard to read based on your insight check. Uh, you, It sounds like she's telling the truth, but you haven't really had spent enough time with her really to pick up on you know how she might lie like if she were how that would sound you're not sure okay uh as you guys are, are kind of making your way along though you're coming to that bend where the where the two trees that you've seen on the way back uh that were kind of acting strange that looked or the like one ate faking. a squirrel yeah well one ate a squirrel and then was clearly faking it and now you see two trees there that look like they're faking like they're pretending to be normal trees so that's what I meant by saying bad acting yeah. is that like they're they're looking like they're um, like they're pretending um, to sway with the wind, but they're not swaying quite right. Like they're just a little bit off. Remember, these aren't real trees. Before we get to this point, I am readying readying firebolt just in case they decide to try to eat us. And do you know what Pogo's doing? <laughs> readying vicious mockery. Readying readying vicious mockery. <laughs> Uh, she you she kind of uh, she's still in front of you guys. She's about probably six eight feet in front of you guys. Uh, she she kind of chuckles and looks over her shoulder. At you guys, she says, "Oh, that that won't be necessary." She just kind of flicks her wrist like dismissively, and a a a, a, a wide uh, ten feet wide, let's say, slash like a like a a, a blade of air. Uh, this is really psionic energy, but the only visual representation would look like air flashes through the center of these trees. Uh, and they, they don't um, they don't cut, but it kind of pushes through them. You see, like like a wave of, of, of a, son, a sonic boom. Everybody remembers uh, Street Fighter, right? Sonic boom. Yeah, sonic boom. Yeah. So a sideway, like a horizontal version of that, about ten feet wide, passes through the center of both of these trees, probably four five feet off of the ground, uh, and then they, they the trees stop, like they, they freeze in place. Like again, very awkward for to see a tree, you know, startling, uh, and then and then kind of settles down and starts swaying with the same cadence as the rest of the trees naturally now, like in the wind with the other. I'm just going to look at Seraphina and have my eyes go big, like... Yeah, that's super creepy. I'm casting Shadow Skin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, then Sarah, uh, you know, gathers her, her shadows around herself and turns all demonic again. Uh, still floating on the broom. Is Pogo walking, by the way? There go. I was just going to walk, yeah. Okay. Why isn't it? I suppose you cast it. You just click the effect. Yeah, you're just clicking the cast. You're going to put the effect on yourself. Uh Oh, shit. There we go. Yeah, that stuff right there, Justin, is why fantasy grounds would not work for the other group. Um, But, like, something regular, something simple will work fine. Just fantasy grounds does not, it's not very user friendly. I love it, of course. You know, we, we, this, obviously, all of us have used it for a long time now. For uh, guys, Becky and Ben, you realize that we're coming up on three years in two more months? Month and a half will be three years. That's insane. Yeah. Doesn't seem like that at all. It you guys could have learned to speak Mandarin. <laughs> well, we, we learned that we're doing this. <laughs> this is a lot more fun. I, I don't I don't need to speak Chinese. Well, <laughs> oh, yet. Uh, yet, Jeremy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, once they take over, then. Right? Okay. Um, anyways, you guys uh, continue along then following her, uh, making your way to the, to the house. Uh, on arrival at the house, you do hear that same slurping sound coming from the bushes again. Uh, you know, maybe they were scared away by the fighting previously, but they appear to be back in the bushes now. Uh, she pays them no mind. It's gone in, walks down the stairs. You guys following? Yep, I'm following. Yeah. Okay. Um, we, if you guys have another ten minutes, we can kind of get to 
you know, down the, the well and kind of end on a, uh, you know, Better probably note. A point. Uh, or we can just end here. Up to you guys. Uh, honestly, I don't know if it's gonna if we're gonna get down the hole in ten minutes. <laughs> that's what I, yeah, that's kind of was. I, I was trying to get here a little bit quicker, but so we yeah. could end on you know a little more uh, fun narrative point. But it's okay. I don't mind. This we can start next week. You know, getting down the hole. Yeah. Are we okay? Yeah. I think I'm good ending right here. I'm, I had a fun. I had a fun. Uh, I kind of like sometimes the battle free ones are nice. They get a chit chat a little bit, do some side stuff. I like it. Yeah. All right, then, guys. Uh, next <sighs> week is week eleven. That work for everybody. So far, so good. I'm not going anywhere. All right, guys. Then we will meet back on the 11th. All right. Talk to you later, guys. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.